The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, this is the beginning of spring. Tiny blades of grass are peeping through the soil. Blossoms are bursting into bloom. The harsh winds of winter have changed to soft, balmy breezes. So without further ado, we bring you a man who is still wearing his longies, Jack Benny. Hello well, uh, again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't mind your kidding about my age or my dramatic ability or my work in pictures or a lot of other things. But I think that my underwear is my own business. <laughs> is there nothing sacred around here? Heaven. But, Jack, spring is here. Don't you think you ought to change into your shorts? Don, this is only the first week in April. When the butterflies come out of their cocoons, I'll come out of mine. <laughs> Until then, I'm taking no chances. Now, Jack, aren't you being just a little overcautious? The winters are so mild out here. He's right, Jackson. You're the only guy in Southern California that wears long underwear. Uh, what did you say, corn fuchsias? <laughs> what was that? I said you're the only guy in Southern California that wears long underwear. Oh, yeah? Did you ever see Tyrone Powers' backyard on a Monday morning? <laughs> Don't tell me those are Annabella's. And uh, another thing, Phil... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. And another thing, Phil, that reminds me. I wish you'd stop running around telling everybody that I wear pajamas with feet in them. Well, you do, don't you? That was one night when I forgot to take off my inner socks. <laughs> Just one. Inner socks? My goodness, Jack. What's the idea of wearing two pairs of socks? He bought some big shoes cheap. <laughs> now, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. Don started out with a beautiful poetic introduction about blades of grass and blossoms on the trees and balmy breezes, so let's stay in the mood. You're right, Jack. Spring is beautiful. I'll say it is. You know, I was out in my yard this morning, and I saw the cutest little robin. Yes? Gee, he was sweet. Oh, I love robins. And he just got in from the south. How do you know? He wasn't unpacked yet. Now, cut it out! <laughs> Heaven to Betsy. You have to make a gag out of everything. Now, isn't there, isn't there any romance in this crowd at all? I was up all night, if that's what you mean. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm talking about spring, birds, nature, flowers. Gee, doesn't a buttercup mean anything to you, Phil? Yeah, but don't let it get around. <laughs> I won't. But no kidding, fellas. This is the season of the year when we should have joy in our hearts. We should be happy and gay. I'm happy, Mr. Benny. I know you are, Dennis. You're always happy. What a mallet his head would make. <laughs> Mary, believe me, it's a real pleasure to have one person around here that's contented and glad he's working for me. That kid's going to get a raise. What are you going to do, let him stand on a box? <laughs> no, I'm not going to let him stand on a box. I'm going to give Dennis an increase in salary. I've heard that too, Dennis. Don't go out and buy a car. <laughs> now, just a second, Phil. I don't know what you're complaining about. Remember that day you came to me looking for a job four years ago? Mr. Benny, you said... You called me Mr. Benny then. <laughs> Mr. Benny, you said, please put me to work on your program. My beer garden job is all right, but I want to improve it. <laughs> I want to get somewhere. Remember that, Phil? Yes, but... And I, I said to you, cheer up, young man. I'll take you under my wing. Well, Phil, I've kept my word, and you've been with me ever since. That's true, Jackson, but I still think that I'm not getting enough dough. Listen, Phil. Listen to me. Always be loyal and always be true to those who have toiled and struggled for you. It isn't the salary or money you get. It's the smile of a friend that counts. You can bet. <laughs> for Benny's your pal, your buddy, your friend. He won't let you down. He'll stick to the end. So if it's money you want, pal, speak up, that's all. And I'll have a new orchestra beginning next fall. <laughs> <laughs> Applause. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Mary, you're next. Have you any complaints to make, young lady? No, Jack. It's wonderful working for you. It's heaven, it's paradise. Skies are all blue. Well. You're so sweet and charming, and you never irk. But in spite of all this, I think you're a... Now, Don! <laughs> Don! Don, have you anything to complain about? No, Jack, I'm happy here working for you. There's no other thing that I would rather do. And now let us hear from our own Dennis Day. 
Have you got a song, something mellow or gay? Oh, yes, sir, I have, and it's really brand new. Well, go ahead, swing it. Come on, let it go. Or go. <laughs> Sing, Dennis. Doesn't spring make you silly, folks? <laughs> Very good, Dennis. Very good. That was My Kind of Country, written by Frank Lesser and Jimmy McHugh, for that forthcoming Paramount picture, Buck Benny Rides Again. Starring Phil Harrison, thanks for the plug. Now, wait a minute, Phil. Let's straighten this out right now. You're not the star of Buck Benny Rides Again. Well, I stand out in it, don't I? Phil, you stand out in that picture about as much as an oyster in Chesapeake Bay. In other words, son, you could be left out entirely and not affect the plot, the length, the suspense, the write-ups, the audience, and you take it from there. <laughs> a fine star. By the way, Jack, when will the picture be finished? Oh, we're through with it, Don. In fact, I have a little surprise for you. Uh, Buck Benny is going to have its world premiere in New York in a couple of weeks, and we're all going. Oh, New York! Oh, yes, yes, sir. When are we leaving, Jack? Uh, right after next Sunday's show, we're going to do two broadcasts there. Wait till the big city gets a load of me in my ten-gallon hat. Well, Jack, that's the kind of a he-man part you've always wanted to play. So he finally made it, huh? Yes, and I don't want to brag or anything, Don, but I think I make a pretty good cowboy. <laughs> oh, Jack, what? tell him about the trouble you had with your horse. Oh, you mean Abdul? Yeah. What a ham that animal was. He tried to steal every scene from me. Why didn't you turn him around so he wouldn't face the camera? He did, and the horse still had more personality than Jack. <laughs> he did not. But you should have seen that horse, Don. He was always looking right in the camera and flashing those teeth of his. What an animal. Well, why didn't you do the same thing? Because in the first place, Phil, my teeth aren't as big as a horse's. You could have ordered them any size you wanted. <laughs> That's so. Well, you're just making things up, Mary. Because if I have false teeth, how is it I can crack nuts with them? You take them out and hammer. <laughs> all right, Mary, all right. You can get on more subjects. We were talking about Buck Benny Rides Again. That's a swell title for a picture, Mr. Benny. How'd you happen to think of it? Well, you see, uh, we used to do a series of Dennis... Didn't you ever listen to this program before you came to work on it? Didn't you? There goes my raise. <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, and you're right, Dennis. <laughs> anyway, we used to do those Western plays, and we called them Buck Benny Rides Again. Oh, boy, they were fun. I used to be Sheriff Buck Benny. A rootin', tootin', shootin', hootin', galootin', fig nootin'. <laughs> That was me. And I used to be your deputy, remember? Yes, sir. And I was Daisy Carson, your sweetheart. Remember how you'd always ride over to my house and visit me? Yeah. And we'd sit in the parlor and hold hands? Uh-huh. And then you'd put the lights out? Uh-huh. And then you'd show your home movies? <laughs> oh, boy, was I romantic. And then there was your pappy, Frank Carson, the town cut-up. That was me, folks. Where's my jug, Daisy? <laughs> And didn't we have an awful time trying to catch Cactus Face Elmer, the villain? You know, fellas, I've got a great idea. Let's put on a Buck Benny tonight and show Dennis how we used to do him. Would you like to hear another one, folks? <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that the horse opera is still popular. So immediately after the next number, ladies and gentlemen, we will bring you a brand new episode of Buck Benny Rides Again. Now, Dennis... Yes, please? Uh, you can be one of my deputies and work with Don. You're sort of a dumb stooge type. Well, gee, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Dennis, believe me, you'll come through. <laughs> All right, Phil, uh, let's have a number and then we'll go into our sketch. Okay, Jackson, do you want us to play loud or soft? There's no choice and you know it. <laughs> so just blast away. Hold it a minute. Hello? Oh, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, I begged and pleaded with you not to call me in the middle of a broadcast. Now, what do you want? Well, boss, I was just listening to the program, and I heard you say you were going to New York a week from tonight. That's right. Do your plans embrace your ambassador to Harlem? <laughs> Yes, Rochester, you're coming along. But we're going to be awfully busy in New York, so I don't know if you'll have time to go to Harlem. Let's get to New York and worry from there. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, as long as you know we're going, you might as well start making preparations. Uh, first of all, tell Mr. Billingsley, our boarder, that we're going to be gone a couple of weeks, so he'll have to make his own coffee in the morning. Okay. By the way, what are we going to do with that polar bear and hostage? Carmichael and Trudy? I don't know. Maybe we can get him a week at the Orpheum. 
I doubt it. Carmichael hasn't rehearsed on his bicycle in a month, and he's all butterfingers with those Indian clubs. They'd never get booked. I don't know about that. Trudy does a mean strip tease. <laughs> strip tease? Yeah, she pulls the plumes out one by one. I know, but what have you got after the first show? <laughs> Besides, they work, they work much better with me. Now, Rochester, go down in the basement and bring up my big trunk and start packing. That old thing? I don't think it'll stand another trip, boss. Oh, it'll do. I only bought it four years ago and was practically new then. That auctioneer must have lied to you. I don't want to hear another word about it, Rochester. That trunk isn't so old. It's got a bustle compartment. That's for sure. <laughs> now, hang up, Rochester. I got a program to do. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. What? Did you see our new picture yet? Yes, they ran Buck Benny for me at the studio last night. How am I in it? Very good, Rochester. You're swell. You're a big hit. I think I'll treat you to a new trunk, boss. So long. Wait a minute. <laughs> Rochester. And he hung up. Oh, well, if he wants to, he wants to. Bless his little heart. Play, Phil. <laughs> that was I Hear Bluebird, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the 24th episode in our Western melodrama entitled Buck Benny Rides Again, or Strange Cargo. <laughs> the opening scene is the office of Sheriff Buck Benny in the thriving little cow town of East Moo, Texas. Curtain. Moosey. Hello? Sheriff's office, Buck Benny speaking. Oh, hello, Red. What? Did I hear about did I? Oh, did I hear about did I? Plug, eh? What did, uh, well, did dead I die die? I mean, is he dead, Red? <laughs> oh, his dad. Dead Eye's dad's dead, Red. <laughs> well, how'd he happen to get shot? Oh, he thought he found a horse. Well, thanks, Red. Goodbye. What's up, Sheriff? Dead Eyes dies dead. I mean, Dead Eyes dead's dead. I mean, Dead Eyes' father just stole his last horse. Too bad. Good riddance, Saul. Now, if we could just get rid of Frank Carson, this town would be fit to live in. Now, hold on there, Deputy. That low-down, no-good skunk is my gal's father. Besides, he's reformed. Reformed? Why, last night he slept in the gutter in front of the East Move Biltmore. Well, that's the best hotel in town, ain't it? I remember when Frank used to sleep in front of the firehouse. They had to take the hook and ladder out the back door. <laughs> Where's Deputy Day? Oh, Day? Yes, please. <laughs> Not too low, Deputy. You're liable to stay there. <laughs> now, look here, Day. I want you to go out and catch some crooks. We ain't got a single prisoner in this jail. With these feds, no wonder. Never mind that and hang out the vacancy sign. That always helps. And remember, Day, the next time you go out... <laughs> Hmm. Did you hear that shooting, Buck? Yep, that's either five aces or her husband came home. <laughs> but that's life, I guess. Say, uh, Sheriff, I hate to keep harping on this, but when are we going to catch Cactus Face Elmer? We've been looking for him for three years. I don't know, Wilson. That vomit is harder to find than art in the Mighty Allen art player. <laughs> But well, I'll get him one of these days. Well, see you later, deputies. Where are you going, Sheriff? Next door to Dead Eyes Barbershop and get a haircut. Then I'm going over and propose to Daisy Carson. Why, you've been proposing to her for over ten years. When's she going to say yes? I don't know, but if she don't say it soon, it won't be worth it. <laughs> so long, deputies. <laughs> Hello, Dead Eyes. Howdy, Sheriff. Did you hear about your father getting shot a few minutes ago? No, was it fatal? Yep. Too bad. What'll it be, haircut or shave? <laughs> haircut. Put the bowl on and let's get going. <laughs> Hello, Goldie. Give me one of them manicures, will you? Okay, Sheriff. Slip me your paw. <laughs> there you are. Watch out for my ears, did I? I declare, Goldie, you're getting prettier every day. I am? Yep, but you've got a long way to go. A mighty long way. <laughs> How was that, did I? <laughs> That's a good one. Say, Buck, at the time they plugged my old man, 
Was he stealing a horse? Yes, he was, did I? Bad habit. Sure you don't want to shave now? <laughs> no, not today. Uh, there's a long hair growing out of your ear, Sheriff. Should I pull it out? Sure, go ahead. Now hold steady. I'm a holding. Here we go. <laughs> Yikes! That got it. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll run over to Daisy's now. What do I owe you for that manicure, Goldie? Fifteen cents, and that's final. Fifteen cents? Well, all the other boys only pay a dime. What's the extra nickel for? You're the only guy in town with ten fingers. <laughs> that's right. There is a lot of shooting going on here. Well, so long, Dead Eye. I'm going over and see Daisy. So long. <laughs> Well, here's the Carson house now. Whoa, partner. Whoa. <laughs> Steady, partner. <laughs> Steady now, and here's an oak to chew while I'm gone. Hope Daisy likes my haircut. Come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and bow-legged. <laughs> Well, gal, you don't exactly have to detour when you come to a fire hydrant yourself. <laughs> I just came from the barbershop, Daisy. What do you think of my haircut? I can't tell with that beanie you're wearing. That's the haircut. Oh. <laughs> well, Daisy, I suppose you know what I came here for. I've been a courting you now for over ten years. You meant everything to me, and you still do. Now, what do you say, gal? Will you marry me? Yes. Now, wait a minute! <laughs> no use rushing into this like a couple of school kids. Buck, I was only kidding. I told you before, I can't never marry you as long as Pappy is alive. I gotta stay home and take care of him. Well, don't you care for me? Yes, but I care mere for him. <laughs> mm, same old story. Where's your Pappy now? Upstairs. He filled a bathtub full of dry martinis and he's diving for olives. <laughs> Doggone him. You know, Daisy, if your old man don't give up drinking, he's going to start seeing things. Start seeing things? He runs all over the house now trying to trap him. <laughs> no fooling. Why, Buck, you know that big empty closet we got upstairs in the attic with nothing hanging on the walls? Yes. That's his trophy room. <laughs> well, I think I better have a talk with Frank and see if I can straighten him out. Well, hello, Buck. Have an olive. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, Buck. I think we better go downstairs and join Daisy. You're downstairs now. <laughs> then I'm going to take them steps out. I don't need them. <laughs> wow, Frank Carson, I'm disgusted with you. Look at him, Daisy. Look at him standing there with a jug in each hand. If I take one away, you'll fall over. <laughs> I'll say, Will. Now, you go back upstairs, Frank, and get some sleep. It'll do you good. Okay. Come on, boys. Boys? <laughs> I don't see anyone. That's his elephants. He's got a herd of them. Well, Daisy, now that we're alone again, how about a kiss? Come on. Pucker up, gal. Open up! Open up the door, Sheriff! Yeah, open up! Unpucker, Daisy. We got company. Come in. What's the trouble, boys? Sheriff, we got bad news for you. Catch his face, Elmer's back in town. He's just robbed the First National Bank. He did? Yep, he got $8,000 in my gun. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Let's go after him. We'll never find him, Sheriff. We don't know where his hideout is. That's right. That vomit always gets away. You better do something, Buck. If you don't find Catch his face this time, it'll cost you your job. I know it will. Doggone, I wish I could find him. I wish I knew where his hideout was. Can't anyone help me? <laughs> What? I am the Blue Fairy. That was last week. This ain't Pinocchio. What are you doing back here? I didn't get paid yet. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Maybe you can help me. Do you know where Cactus Face Elmer is hiding? Yes. Where? You will find Cactus Face Elmer at the... (laughs) 
This, ladies and gentlemen, will not be continued next week. <laughs> if you want to know the ending of this little play, eat a Welsh rarebit, a dish of chocolate ice cream, four dill pickles, doze off, and go to town. Play, Phil. <laughs> And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And, Dennis, that's the way we used to do Buck Benny. Did you like it? Yes, but I'd like to know where Cactus Face is. You're the only one that cares. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, next Sunday, the Jell-O program will originate from New York City, where Paramount is holding the premiere of its new picture, Buck Benny Rides Again. So without further ado, we whisk you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where Jack is in the throes of last-minute packing. Take it away! Creole babies walk along with rhythm in their thighs, rhythm in their feet and in their lips and in their eyes. Where do highbrows find that kind of love that satisfies? Underneath the Harlem moon. I'm getting anxious! Rochester. Come on, boys, join in. Never mind. There's no field of cotton. Picking cotton is simple. They don't live in cabins Rocket. like the old folks. We'll never get to New York the way you're moving. Our train leaves in a couple of hours. My trunk isn't half packed yet. Well, boys, I only got two hands. Yes, but you got a cigar in one and a sandwich in the other. <laughs> now put them down and get to work. My contract specifies one hour for lunch. You can eat and work at the same time like I do. Let's see, where did I put my hamburger? It's laying right there on your dress shirt. My goodness. Oh, well, I can wear a vest with it. Now, Rochester, take these socks here and put them uh, in the top drawer. Boss, this trunk is so old, half the drawers won't open. You're just a weakling, that's all. Here, hold my chocolate declare. I'll open it. Okay. Mm. There. That got it. Look out for them bats. Oh, stop, Roger. They're not bats. They're just large moths. Chew. Chew. And that reminds me, I thought I told you to put mothballs in this trunk. I did, and they threw them back at me. <laughs> now, don't get cute. There, the socks go in here. Hey, wait a minute, Rochester. What's the matter? I told you to hold my chocolate eclair, not eat it. It's right here in my hand, boss. Look again. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't see it. Now, take my underwear and put them in this bottom... That must be Miss Livingston. Come in. I'm the man from the express company. Did you have a trunk to go to the station? Yes, but it's not ready yet. You'll have to come back. Gosh, nobody's ever ready. How do I stand it? How do I stand it? <laughs> Rather temperamental fellow. Say, Rochester, get my blue suit out of the closet and pack it. I want to give it to my cousin Marvin when we stop uh, in Chicago. Is it that old? <laughs> that suit's in good condition. It hardly shines at all. I wish my future was as bright as that. <laughs> now, Rochester, I've had enough out of you. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Are you all set to go? Sure. Gee whiz, Jack, aren't you packed yet? Just about. Sit down and relax. Okay, boss. Not you! <laughs> now, let's see. I'll be in New York uh, two weeks. How many shirts do you think I ought to take along, Mary? One blue or 14 white. <laughs> Mary, I wish you'd be serious. I want to get this done. Now, what else? Now, here it's pretty cold in New York. Do you think I ought to take along my spats? Yeah, and don't forget your coonskin cap. Mary, I haven't worn a coonskin cap since I portrayed Daniel Boone in our high school play. I went over very big. Nobody asked you. Well, I did. <laughs> here, Rochester, put these shirts away. Say, boss, look at this old faded newspaper I found in the bottom drawer here. Should I throw it away? No, let's see it. Hmm, San Francisco Chronicle. I wonder what I saved this for. Well, I'll be doggone. Look, Mary, look here on the amusement page. Oh, yeah. Jack Benny, big hit at Orpheum this week. I sure was. And see that picture of me holding my violin? Uh-huh. What's that stuff on your head? That's hair. <laughs> I had a pompadour in those days. Gosh, the Orpheum San Francisco. Gee, it seems like only yesterday. Yesterday? Look at this front page. Gold discovered in Alaska. Let's see that. Oh, yeah, I remember. When the news came in, they emptied the theater in two minutes. By the time I got my makeup off, you couldn't buy a shovel in the whole town. 
Just think, but for that, I might have been known as Nugget Jack, the Klondike Kid. Mary, can't you just see me digging for gold? No, I seem to see you burying us. <laughs> well, it's hot here, folks, this week. That's why that joke was bad. But it's <laughs> for a guy that was in Bordel as long as I was, I ought to have my head examined for giving you that opening. Here, Rochester, pace us right up in my scrapbook. Okay, should I indicate your hair with an arrow? That won't be necessary. I just want to keep the paper. Come in. Well, here I am again. Is the trunk ready yet? Not quite, young man. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> so impatient. Oh, Rochester, where's that gray suit with the stripes I sent out to be cleaned? Here it is, but your cleaner took the stripes out of it. Took the, <laughs> took the stripes out of it? Boss, you could send a zebra to that outfit and it would come back plain. Rochester, I'd just like to send a zebra to the classy, closey cleaners and show you how wrong you are. As a rule, they're very good. I sent him a sweater last week and it came back with Lana Turner in it. Always a comedian, eh, Miss Livingston? Say, Rochester, I just happened to think, did you collect the two weeks' room rent from Mr. Billingsley, our boarder? Yes, I did, boss, but he took it back. What do you mean he took it back? Well, he didn't exactly take it. What do you mean he didn't exactly take it? How can a nice man like him know so much about African handball? <laughs> Rochester, I won't have you gambling with my border. Now, help me close this trunk. Mary, you push on one side. Rochester, you push the other, and I'll snap the lock. All together now. <clears throat> Come on, push. There. Well, that's that. It's closed. Now, Mary, I think we ought to run ahead and get it... <laughs> Hmm. Uh, what were you saying, Jack? Never mind. Rochester, get a piece of rope and tie it around the trunk. And Mary, let you and I go on ahead. I want to stop at the drugstore and get some things. We'll meet you at the station, Rochester. Phone for a taxi. Okay, boss. Oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. All set for your little trip, I see. Yes, yes. We're going to New York for a couple of weeks. I hope you won't be lonely here all by yourself. No, no. I'm happy as long as I have my pipe and a <laughs> good book to read. <laughs> That's fine. Well, Mr. Billingsley, we'll be leaving in a little while. I'd come down to the station to see you off, but I have a splitting headache. Oh, that's too bad. There it goes again. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Billingsley. Hmm, isn't he a nice fellow, Mary? Yes, but why does he always push that wheelbarrow around? He claims it's an ashtray. <laughs> Sweet guy, though. Come in. Well, is that trunk ready yet? Yes, young man, here it is. Are you happy? Trunk. Trunks, trunks. My whole life is nothing but trunks, and you ask me if I'm happy. Gee, I just asked. Never saw anybody so high strung. Your cab's here, boss. Okay, now don't forget, Rochester. Shut off the milk, stop the paper, water the flowers, put sheets all over the furniture, take Carmichael and Trudy to the pet shop, and be at the station in an hour. In an hour? Yes. Boss, I couldn't do all that if I was a whole Johnson Quad. <laughs> stop arguing. You're losing time. Come on, Mary. Never saw a guy like him, always complaining. Look, Jack, there's Ronald Coleman out in his yard. Oh, yes, I must say goodbye to him. Goodbye, Ronnie. Goodbye, Ronald. Goodbye, Mr. Coleman. That's more like goodbye. <laughs> He's a little cold toward me. I wonder what's wrong. He's probably jealous of your work in pictures. Yes, I guess you're right, Mary. That's about it. Do you mind if I break your arm? Just try it, that's all. Well, here we are. Where to, sweetheart? A union station, and don't drive too fast. Okay, sweetheart. Hmm. Get in, Mary. Right with you, sweetheart. Mary! <laughs> Say, Jack, are we going to stop at the studio and pick up the rest of the gang? No, Mary, they'll all meet us at the station. i got to stop at the drugstore and get some things I need. There's one right ahead. Oh, yes. Driver, stop at that drugstore right there, will you? Say, I thought you wanted to go to the Union Station. I do, but I want to stop at the drugstore first. Do you mind? I'm going to leave the meter running, sweetheart. <laughs> go ahead. That's not going to worry me any. And I know why. Paramount is paying for this trip. <laughs> what if they are? Buck Benny rides again on the cuff. <laughs> Mary, if you don't... Stop here, driver. Okay, sweetheart. I can't understand this. I don't even know the fella. <laughs> Wait here, we'll be right out. 
Let's see, I gotta get some blades And oh yes, some shaving cream Don't you make your own anymore? No It lathered all right But it made my skin turn blue you know? <laughs> Now where's the clerk? Oh, there he is Ah, good evening, miss What can I do for you? The Klondike kid's buying I'm the lady known as Lou Mary Yes, I have quite a few things I want to get here You see, I'm going to New York Ah, then you first will need a railroad ticket well, I came in here to buy some toilet articles That may be right But you cannot go to New York without a ticket I know I can't go to New York without a ticket <laughs> But I've got one You don't think I'd come to a drugstore to buy a railroad ticket, do you? Why not? Oh, fine <laughs> Now, look, mister, we haven't much time. I just want to get some shaving cream and some razor blades. Very good indeed. Shaving cream, razor blades, and a razor. I have a razor. Let's see it. <laughs> Believe me, I own one. <laughs> For goodness sake, you don't expect me to carry my razor around in my pocket. You got your toothbrush there. Not a toothbrush. That's a small whisk broom. I always carry it when I travel. How much are you going to charge Paramount for brushing yourself off? <laughs> oh, Mary, to hear you talk, you think I was the tightest guy in the world. I don't know whether it's win, place, or show, but you're in the money. <laughs> Mary, I'm trying to buy something. Hey, sweetheart, the meter's still running. Okay, who cares? Now, come on, mister, give me a tube of shaving cream. Why don't you buy an electric razor? I don't want an electric razor. Uh, look, I will demonstrate. Oh. You hold it in your hand like this. Click. Click. First around the face. Oh, look, I, I, that's not what I want, you see. Now, under the nose. Tick, tick, tick. Look, I, I don't want that. Around the face again. Yeah, that's very clever. And there you are. Well, that, that's pretty fast, all right. But look, I'll just take a tube of plain shaving cream. Then you do not want an alarm clock. An alarm clock? Who asked for an alarm clock? With him, you don't have to ask. Look, mister, I don't want an alarm One clock. One moment, I will demonstrate. Look. For instance, I'm home asleep. Now, wait a minute. I'm not interested don't in alarm... Don't wake me up. Look, mister, I'm trying to catch a train. Then suddenly... Ding, 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 ding. All right, now what happened? Nothing. I didn't hear it yet. Oh. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. It I'm... rings again. <laughs> I'm awake. Now, look, mister, it's all very interesting, but I'm trying to get some shaving. Hey, sweetheart, it's up to $1.70. Let it click. I'm not through here yet. Now, for the last time, mister, do I get my shaving cream or not? Then you don't want a radio. A radio? Now, look, I will demonstrate. Click, and suddenly... Oh, come on, Mary, let's get out. What about the shaving cream? The heck with the shaving cream. Let's go. Oh, boy, what a screwy guy. Well, come on, you can get what you need at the station. They've got a drugstore there. Oh, that's right. Okay, driver, Union Station. Hey, the meter is up to 420 now, sweetheart. 420? Why, just a minute ago, you told me it was $1.70. After 6 o'clock, there's a cover charge. Oh. Well, if you haven't got a floor show, I'm going to hit you right over the head. Now, drive on. All right, buddy, there's the Union Station. What do you want to do, drive right through it? Okay, okay. That'll be five sixty. Here's six dollars. Keep the change. Thanks. So long, sweetheart. <laughs> Goodbye, sugar plum. <laughs> Make a note of that, Mary. To Paramount, six dollars for taxi cab. Don't forget it costs you nickel to call it. That's right. Make it six oh five. I hope Rochester got here with my trunk. I want to check on that the first thing. See, there's certainly a big crowd here. I don't see any of our gang around. Oh, don't worry. We still have plenty of time. All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Albuquerque, Dodge City, Kansas City, Chicago, and New York. Board! Hey, wait a minute, you. That train doesn't leave for a half hour yet. Well, I can practice, can't I? <laughs> hmm, he must be new here. Now, uh, now, where in the world is Rochester? Peekaboo, boss! <laughs> Rochester, don't sneak up behind me. You know how nervous I am. My trunk get here all right? Part of it. Good. Part of it? What do you mean, part of it? Well, we were driving down Wiltshire Boulevard when all of a sudden the trunk bounced off. My trunk bounced off? Did it fly open? Like my mouth at a chicken dinner. <laughs> well, it's your fault, Rochester. I'll bet my things are a mess. You know that high silk hat you always wear with your evening clothes? Yes. Well, a truck ran over it. Oh, my goodness. My high silk hat? It's a beanie now. <laughs> On it. Well, 
Mary, mark down $15 on my expense account for one high silk hat. You can have it blocked for 75 cents. What are you trying to do, make a cheapskate out of Paramount? <laughs> mark down what I tell you. All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Albuquerque, Dodge City, Kansas City, Chicago, and Alaska! <laughs> Alaska? I've given you another chance, Klondike. <laughs> oh, button your lip. I got a zipper there. Quiet. Hmm, what a smart alley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Dennis. Oh, hello, Dennis. And your mother's with you. How do you do, Mrs. Day? Good evening. Now, Mr. Benny, I am leaving Dennis in your care. Yeah. So I want you to see that he's a good boy in New York and gets to bed every night at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Better make that nine so Jack won't have to stay up so late. Listen, Mary, when I get to New York, I'll be stepping out plenty. Well, I'll be the life of the party. Oh, you and Georgie Jessel. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Mary. Come along, Dennis. I'll buy you a Dick Tracy book to read on the train. Oh, boy, Dick Tracy. Bang, 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 bang. Take that, lefty. <laughs> Relax, Dennis. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Day. I'll see you when we get back. Goodbye. I'm thirsty, Jack. I'm going over and get a Coca-Cola. Okay, you can put that on my expense account, Mary. I'll treat you. See you later. <laughs> Your trunk's on the train, boss. Everything is all set. Good. Now, we arrive in New York at Grand Central Station Tuesday morning. The minute we get there, I want you to see that the trunk is brought immediately to my hotel. I'm getting off at 125th Street and have breakfast. Rochester, you don't have to get off at Harlem the first thing in the morning. Oh, yes, I do, boss. She's got the waffles on already. Well, all right, but you better be at my hotel by noon. The same day? Yes, the same day. Don, aren't you thrilled about going to New York? Oh, I sure am, Jack. And I'll bet you are, too, with the world premiere of your picture on Broadway. Yes, sir. There'll be plenty of excitement. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, did you get your Coca-Cola, Mary? Yeah, five cents. You better put that down for stamps. It sounds more business-like. <laughs> well, we're all here but Phil. I wonder where he is. I just passed him. There he is talking to his mother. Well, everybody's mother is down here today. Hey, Phil. Be right with you, Jackson. Well, Mom, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Take care of yourself. I will, son. Now, remember what I told you. While you're in New York, stay in the groove and don't get off the beam. <laughs> But, Mom, mm. Mom, I got a jive, don't I? Yes, but don't cut too many rugs. Your chops is beaten up. <laughs> chops is beat? What kind of talk is that? Okay, Mom, I'm help. I'll watch myself. Now nah, you're cooking with gas. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I got to run along now. Goodbye, Mom. So long, Bob. <laughs> Bob, well, I'll be darned. Hiya, Jackson. Are you all set to hop that rattler for the big town? All set, Phil. Well, we better get going. All aboard. Train leaving on track seven for Albuquerque, Dot City, Kansas City, Chicago, and, uh, and, uh, New York. What's the matter with me? <laughs> oh, stop at those false alarms. That's not a false alarm, Jack. Look at all the people going through the gate. Oh, yeah. Come on, everybody. Our train's leaving. Okay, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Hurry up. Oh, Jack. What? Jack, you know what? You forgot to get your shaving cream. Oh, that's right. I did, but I still got time. Here's the drug counter right over there. See you on the train, fellas. Hey, buddy, I'm in a big hurry. Uh, give me a tube of shaving cream. Shaving cream? Yeah, shaving cream. You've got it, haven't you? I don't know. Hey, Eddie, have you got any shaving cream? I don't know. Hey, Phil, have we got any shaving cream? I don't know. Hey, Sam! Never mind. Let it go. I'll get it in New York. Hey, wait for me. Wait for me. Hold the train. <laughs> with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from New York City. Well, Mary, we're on our way. Are you excited? Yeah. You know, Jack, I was just wondering, it's going to be cold in New York. Do you think Paramount would mind if I bought a mink coat? No, but it would kill me. Good night, folks. <laughs>
The Jell-O Program, coming to you from the Ritz Theater in New York City, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, this week our program originates from New York City. Yes, sir. New York, which was originally purchased from the Indians for $24. Yep, 24 bucks. So tonight, we bring you a man who could have bought it for twenty three fifty, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't mind your kidding me about being tight when we're in Hollywood, but here in New York it doesn't fit. But there's a guy living in this town that makes me look like Diamond Jim Brady. <laughs> I think I know who you mean. I think you do. Uh, this particular fellow is so money mad that not only is he on the air for Texaco every Wednesday night, but he pumps gas the rest of the week. <laughs> Uh, this gentleman... Now, wait a minute, Jack. I wouldn't do any gags about Fred Allen if I were you. Remember, he's right here in New York, and you might have trouble with him. I'm not scared of that windbag. And let me tell you something, Don. I've got a bodyguard with me that's one of the toughest mugs in New York City. His name is Killer Hogan. So uh, don't be afraid to ask me what I told you to this morning. Uh, go ahead, ask me, Don. Okay. Tell me, Jack, why did Allen say on his last program that you ride around in glass-bottom taxi cabs so you can look for cigar butts? <laughs> Is that true? Uh, yes, it is, Don. I do ride around in glass-bottom taxi cabs, and I do look for cigar butts. But I wish I had a nickel for every time I ran over Alan's fingers. <laughs> uh, that's how our fight started. He claimed Park Avenue was his. <laughs> Jack, you must be kidding. Oh, no, I'm not, Don. Of course, since Alan has been doing well, he carries a malacca cane with a nail on the end of it. <laughs> As, uh, as a matter of fact... Oh, hello, Hogan. Everything's okay outside, Chief. <laughs> uh, okay. Everything okay in here, Chief? Yeah, okay. I'm on the job, Chief. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, Don, it's sure great to be back on Broadway. Pardon me, Jack. Was that killer Hogan... Yes, he may not look so tough, but he's really a gorilla. But as I was saying, Don, it's sure great to be back on Broadway and broadcasting again from this cozy little theater. The whole staff here is so sentimental and thoughtful. What do you mean? Well, we were, uh, when we were here a year ago, I left my derby on the windowsill in my dressing room. When I walked in there this morning, guess what? It was still there? Not only that, someone planted a geranium in it. <laughs> I put it on, and I looked exactly like Carmen Miranda. Huh? Tell me, Don, have you had any fun in New York? Yes, indeed, Jack. The little woman and I have been having a grand time. Oh, yes, the little woman. By the way, Don, as long as this uh, trip is a sort of a honeymoon for you, I'd like to pay your wife's hotel bill as well as yours. Oh, no, you don't have to do that, Jack. Oh, yes, Don, I insist. Well, hey, gee, thanks very much. Darn nice of you. That's all right. By the way, where are you living? At the Ritz-Carlton. Yay! <laughs> Uh, all right, Don, I made a promise, and I'm going through with it. Uh, you can live at the Ritz. Thanks. Uh, now, here's a handful of nickels. You know where to eat. <laughs> oh, you standing in line for change, you know. Hey, Chief. Huh? There's a dame out here. Should I let her in? A dame? Yeah, she looks like a gun mob. Out of my way, dream boat, or I'll scuttle you. Mary, huh? Yeah, aren't you the one, though? You know, Mary, you got a bigger reception than I did. Well, I didn't sell my tickets. I gave them away. I gave mine away, too. Hogan, what are you standing there for? She took my blackjack away from me. <laughs> Mary, please return Mr. Hogan's blackjack. Some blackjack. It's got sachet in it. Never mind. Hand it over. Okay. Here it is, Hogan. Ouch! <laughs> Darn you. Mary, I won't have you beating up my bodyguard. You can go, Hogan. Okay, cheese. <laughs> now, Mary, was that nice? Fine bodyguard. Oh, he's all right. Well, with your body, I guess it's okay. <laughs> just leave him alone, that's all. Okay. Hello, Don. How's the little woman? Oh, she's just fine, thanks. And you know what, Mary? What? Jack is paying all of our expenses at the Ritz-Carlton. That's great. Jack who? <laughs> Jack me, that's who. I'm paying all the expenses for Don and his wife while they're in New York. 
Now anything can happen. I wouldn't be surprised to see men walking down the street with geraniums growing out of their derbies. I can show you one of them, too. <laughs> so it's no miracle. By the way, Mary, I saw you last night at the Ed Wynn show. Did you see it, Jack? Ed Wynn? No, not yet, Don. Well, don't miss it. He's a scream. <laughs> I tell you, Jack, my side still aches. Oh. <laughs> um, Ed, uh, Ed Wynn, eh? You should have been there. You know, Jack... Dan, Don left Lotta. That's Don. He's been with us for seven years. <laughs> remember, Dan was the fellow we had uh, nine years ago. You remember? <laughs> huh? You know, Jack. What? John left Lauder dead with it. He does it you. Oh, he does, eh? Uh, what else did you see, Mary? Oh, I saw a lot of swell <laughs> shows. I've been going every night. Edwin, eh? I saw George Washington slept here and Panama Hattie and I Just a minute, Mary. Listen, Wilson, what's so funny about Ed Wynn? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I think he's one of the best comedians I've ever seen. Oh, you do, eh? Yes, I do. Well, that did it. Dig, Wilson, there goes your wife's hotel bill. (laughs) The nickels he can keep. What a traitor. Say, Chief. There's a young fellow out in the hall who claims he's a tenor. Uh, Should I give him the old one, too? No, let him in. Okay, come in, you. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. You can go now, killer. Dennis, give Mr. Hogan his blackjack. I said give it to him. Here you are. Oh, keep it. Somebody else will take it anyway. You let him alone, Dennis. Who is he, Mr. Benny? My bodyguard. I got him in case Fred Allen tries to have me slugged around here, you know. Well, you don't have to worry about anyone annoying you at the hotel, Mr. Benny. You're at the Sherry Netherlands, aren't you? Uh, Yes, Dennis. Why? Well, my uncle is the house detective there. Oh, is that so? What's his name? Tiptoes McNulty. (laughs) Oh, yes, I met him. And by the way, I wish you'd speak to him, Dennis. He threw an aunt of mine out of my room yesterday. It was very embarrassing. I'll mention it to him. Thanks. Well, Dennis, as long as Phil isn't here yet for his band number, how about doing your song? Okay. I wonder where he is, anyway. Say, Mary, did you call Phil at his hotel like I told you to? Yes, and before I could tell him who I was, he made a date with me. (laughs) Oh, well, he'll probably be along pretty soon. Go ahead, Dennis. Let's have your number. Okay. Now what? Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our... Thanks, Hogan. Drag him out. (laughs) Okay, Chief, I knew I'd get rolling. I had faith in you, Hogan. Believe me. That was There I Go, sung by Dennis Day, and very good. By the way, Dennis, you remember before we left Hollywood, I promised your mother I'd keep an eye on you and see that you behaved yourself. Who, me? Yes, you. I don't want to stop you from having a good time here in New York, but I don't like the idea of you're going to burlesque shows and then waiting at the stage entrance for the girls. That isn't nice. Well, you do it. <laughs> now, Dennis, after all, I'm a little older than you are. A little, he says. <laughs> I mean, I'm an adult. In the first place, I was waiting at the stage door for my aunt. Bumps Benny. <laughs> He's a dub dancer. And in the second place, Dennis... Hiya, Jackson. Look what I found out in the hall. Phil, put Hogan down. (laughs) Okay. Well, here I am, folks. Come on, patty cake. You had to ask for it, didn't you? All right, killer, you can go. Should I give him the old one, too, Chief? No, just get out. Okay, I'm on the job, Chief. Say, who is that guy? Never mind him, Phil. What's the idea of showing up so late? Well, you know how it is, Jackson. I only get to the big town once a year. I got a lot of things to do, a lot of things to see. Uh Uh-huh. Now, take this afternoon, for instance. I went to Staten Island. You went to Staten Island? How did that happen? I followed a blonde into a hotel that turned out to be a ferry boat. (laughs) Oh, so you went to Staten Island, eh, Phil? Yeah, I took a trip all around the harbor. You ought to do that sometime, Jackson. It's very educating. Oh, uh... (laughs) <laughs> oh, it must be. Huh? Yeah, I've seen the battery and the skyline, and I've seen the Statue of Liberty. Oh, you've seen them. Yeah. yeah. And then when I got back, I've seen Alice Island. <laughs> you mean Ellis Island? No, Alice. She lives on 46th Street. 
Oh, Alice Island. Oh, yes, yes. Remember, Mary, that's the girl we saw Phil with the other night. She looks like Alice Island. Well, we're right back in the harbor again. <laughs> anyway, Phil, it's nice to do a little sightseeing while we're in New York. Oh, boy, Fifth Avenue on a windy day. <laughs> now, cut that out. What a guy. Say, Phil, don't forget you promised to take me to see Life of Father next week. It's a date, Mary. Wait a minute, Mary. I took you to see Life of Father the last time we were in New York. Yeah, but look where we sat. Way, way up in the balcony. Oh, we weren't up so high. Go on. A St. Bernard dog brought us our program. <laughs> now, don't be silly. We couldn't have been so far up. I saw the whole show. Sure, but when the curtain went down on the first act, you said, Look, somebody dropped their handkerchief. All right, I'm a comedian. I'm supposed to say funny things once in a while. Hey, Chief. Oh, fine. <laughs> There's a man outside that says he's a doctor. A doctor? Yes. Should I give him the old one, too? No, where is he? Jack, look, it's that quack you had in Hollywood. From Hollywood? Oh, my goodness. Well, well, how's my little man this chilly, willy day? <laughs> now, Dr. Leroy, what are you doing in New York? You're the only patient I've got, and you're not going to get away from me. But, Doctor, I'm cured. I told you my cold is gone. Well, if you can't catch one here, I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> Look, Doc, there's nothing wrong with me. I feel wonderful. Now, open your coat. I want to tap your chest. Oh, what's the use? Now, hold still. <laughs> you see, there's nothing wrong. Now, let's try over here. Well, there goes my watch. <laughs> now, Doc, will you please leave me alone? Now, just a minute. I want to see if your lungs are all right. I'm take all a deep right. breath. Oh. Come on now. Take a real deep breath. Oh, all right. Now, hold it. Well, good night, Mr. Benny. Mm, 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 mm. I'll see you tomorrow and you can exhale. I'm exhaling right now. For heaven's sake, how long do you think I can hold my breath? Look at his face, Doc. It's all blue. Uh, don't worry. It'll go back to gray in just a minute. <laughs> Goodbye. Imagine that guy coming all the way from Los Angeles just to break your watch. Well, it's all Rochester's fault. I told him before we left Hollywood to call up the doctor, tell him I don't need him anymore. Hey, Jackson, where is Rochester? I don't know. I haven't seen him since our first day in town. We got off the train. He came to the hotel with me, unpacked my trunk, pressed my new brown suit... Put it on, and that's the last I saw. <laughs> now, Phil, play a number while I cool off a little, will you? Okay. But listen, Jackson, this isn't my regular band, so don't expect too much. Phil, believe me, if they hit just one good note during the entire number, you have not made this trip in vain. <laughs> now, go ahead. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes. Thanks, Hogan. Drag him out again. <laughs> that was, so you're the one played by Phil Harris and his New York Orchestra. Say, where'd you get this aggregation, Phil? Well, I borrowed a few of the boys from Tommy Dorsey, and then I got a couple from Joe Reichman. I see. And I got the brass section from Abe Lyman. I thought so. I can smell the pastrami from here. <laughs> No kidding, I never saw a guy in Lyman's band order anything that didn't have a dill pickle laying alongside it. <laughs> Say, Phil, I noticed during your last number, one of your musicians wasn't playing at all. He just sat there with the instrument on his lap. I got him from Stokowski. He wouldn't play with us for a million dollars. <laughs> oh, well, I can see his side of it. Say, Mary, do me a favor, will you? Uh, what do you want? Uh, get my little book out of my overcoat. I've got some phone numbers there where I might be able to reach Rochester. Okay. I'll find out once and for all whether he's California's ambassador to Harlem or working for me. Hey, Chief. Oh, brother. What is it, Hogan? There's a guy out here who says he's the mayor. The mayor? Yes, he don't look like LaGuardia to me. <laughs> he don't, eh? Hello, Jack. Can I see you for a minute? What? Why, it's the mayor of Waukegan, Bidey Tolcott. Come on in, Bidey. <laughs> Well, this certainly is a surprise. I'm glad to see you, Bidey. Listen, Hogan, this gentleman is the mayor of my hometown. Oh, 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 oh. then I'm glad I didn't give him the old one-two. <laughs> what do you mean with that old one-two? One-two, button my shoe, three-four, shut... Get out of here, will you? <laughs> Holy smoke. 
My goodness, Jack, who was that fellow? Well, it's like this, Bidey. Uh, Fred Allen's got a bunch of thugs out, you know, looking for... I had to hire a bodyguard. Say, Bidey, uh, you know the gang, don't you? Sure. Hello, Phil. Don? Glad to see you, Mayor Talkett. Hiya, Bidey. What's cooking? Phil, please. Well, well, there's Kenny Bakey. Hello, Kenny. Kenny Bakey? Kenny <laughs> Bakey. <laughs> Hello. Dennis, wake up. You're not Kenny Baker. What's the difference? A tenor's a tenor. <laughs> Well, I've had trouble with all of them, if that's what you mean. Uh, tell me, Bidey, how's the old gang in Waukegan? How's Julius Sinigan and Stubb Wilbur? Oh, they're around. The last time I saw Stubb, he was on the floor of his garage. Oh, fixing a car, eh? Nope, just laying there. <laughs> ah, good old Stubb. Uh, here's your little red book, Jack. Thanks. Oh, Mary, you remember Bidey Talcott, the mayor of Waukegan, don't you? Oh, sure. Hello, Mary. Hello, Bidey. What's that under your nose? It's a mustache. He's always had it. Say, Bidey, I meant to ask you, isn't that your gavel sticking out of your coat pocket there? Yeah. What do you need that for? You're in New York. I brought some walnuts with me. <laughs> I see. Goody, after the show, we'll have a party. Now, cut that out. Excuse me a minute, Bidey. Say, Mary, I've got to get in touch with Rochester. Call up this first number in my little book. He may be there. Okay. Well, Bidey, I can't get over your being in New York. What's the big idea? I came to see you about the premiere of your picture, Jack. We're all set for you and Waukegan. And Waukegan? Why, Bidey, didn't you know the premiere of Love Thy Neighbor is being held right here in New York Tuesday night? Well, I'll be doggone. Jack, that number is ringing. Give me the phone. Excuse me, Bidey. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello. This is the Harlem Social Benevolent and Spare Ribs Every Thursday Club. <laughs> Oh, can you tell me if Rochester's there? Come again? Uh, Rochester Van Jones. He works for me, and I want to talk to him. Uh, are you Mr. Jack Benny? Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, oh Is he there or not? Well, he was here, Mr. Benny, but as soon as he won, he left. <laughs> oh, I see. Was he shooting craps? He must have been. We ain't much on backgammon up here. <laughs> Well, where do you think I can get in touch with Rochester? Uh, you might call Monument 81700. That's his girlfriend. All right, thank you. Mary, try Monument 81700. Okay, Chief. Oh, Bidey. Yes, Jack? I'm surprised you didn't know about the premiere being held in New York. Well, can't you switch it to Walk Hegan? Not very well. You see, it's all set for the Paramount Theater here Tuesday night. Well, I'll be doggone. Look, Bidey, there was nothing I could there do. There you are, Jack. Give me that phone. Excuse me, Bidey. Hello? Susan Brown, the sweetest gal in town, talking. <laughs> uh, well, Miss Brown, uh, this is Jack Benny. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm trying to get in touch with Rochester. Is he there? He was here. Oh. Well, do you think he'll come back? In all modesty, I can guarantee that. <laughs> Well, Miss Brown, when he returns, will you please have him call my hotel? And also tell him he's not getting any salary this week. That ain't gonna worry him much. He got a pair of dice that must have gone to Harvard. <laughs> oh, he has. Well, Miss Brown, where do you think I could reach him right now? Well, he left a number here. Lehigh 25863. Lehigh 25863. Is that another girl? If it is, you better start looking for a new butler. <laughs> well, I'll call it anyway. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Doggone, that boy's always in trouble. <laughs> say, uh... Say, Mary. What? Rochester won a lot of money in a crap game last night. Well, figure it out some way to get it yourself. I'm busy. <laughs> That's not why I mentioned it. <laughs> Dial Lehigh 25863 and we'll see if we can get Rochester there. Okay. You know, Bidey, I'm awfully sorry about the premiere, but didn't you get my letter? Sure, but I want the opening in Waukegan. So do I, Bidey, but it can't be done. Well, why not? Look, Bidey, if I told you once, I told you five times. <laughs> the premiere's in New York. There's nothing I can do about it. Here you are, Jack. Give me the phone. Excuse me, Bidey. Hello? Hello, Lennox Avenue, Jim, till your spin club. <laughs> now, 
Now, look, Mr... Mr... Radcliffe Spears Jr. talking. Now, look, Radcliffe, I'm trying to get in touch with Rochester Van Jones. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is Jack Benny. You had me. Uh-uh, didn't you? <laughs> now, listen, what about Rochester? Is he there? He was, yeah, but he made his point and left. <laughs> I know. I understand he's been very lucky. Lucky, he says. <laughs> now, Radcliffe, please tell me, where did Rochester go? I don't know. Hey, Sylvester, where did Rochester go? I don't know. Hey, Pancake, where did Rochester go? I don't know. Hey, hey! Never mind, let it go. I'll find it myself. <laughs> Now, look, Bidey, I did everything I could to have the premiere held in Waukegan. I went to Paramount. Personally, I argued about it. But they insisted that it must be in New York. So, you see, Bidey, if there was anything I could possibly do, I'd be only too glad to do it. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night, still broadcasting from New York City. Say, Bidey, as long as you're in town, how about sticking around till Tuesday and see the opening of our picture? Okay. Of course, I'll have to call up the little woman. Now you're talking. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program, coming to you from the stage of the Ritz Theater in New York City, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the latest and greatest of Western heroes, a rugged, two-fisted cowboy who rides like Roy Rogers, hoots like Hoot Gibson, hops like Hopalong Cassidy, and skips like Allison Skipworth, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Yippee again, folks. This is Two Gun Benny talking. Bang, bang. And, Don, I gather from your introduction that you've seen Buck Benny rides again at the Paramount this week. Tell me, how did you like it? Well, Jack, I'm not saying this just because I'm a friend of yours, but the picture was swell and you were great in it. Really? But I thought you told me it was going to be in Technicolor. We tried Technicolor, but it didn't work out. You see, Don, due to a peculiar pigment in my skin, I photographed plaid. <laughs> In fact, you couldn't tell where my suit left off and my face began. <laughs> tell me, Don, how did the picture go over? Did the audience seem to enjoy it? Well, Jack, you mean to tell me that you haven't seen your own picture yet? Well, I've been meaning to, Don, but it slipped my mind. I must drop in there one of these days. <laughs> Why, Jack Benny, what are you talking about? Mary, I'm speaking to Don. The idea of telling him a big fib like that. What do you mean, Mary? Well... Never mind. Jack got a job as an usher at the Paramount so he could see his picture six times a day. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mary. That wasn't me at all. That was my cousin, Boo-Boo. <laughs> we look exactly alike in a uniform. Well, all I know is I said, hello, Jack, to cousin Boo-Boo, and you turned plaid. <laughs> Mary, that wasn't me ushering. How many times do I have to tell you that it wasn't me? Oh, Jack. Stubbs, please. I mean, what is it, Don? <laughs> See, Mary, you got me all confused. <laughs> what do you want, Don? I can't imagine you're taking a job as a nicer. Uh, Why, you can go in and see your picture anytime you want to. For heaven's sake, Don, are you going to fall for everything Mary says? I told you it was my cousin, Boo-Boo. We resemble each other, except that he has a mole on his chest. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You got a hula dancer with a mole on yours. <laughs> Now, Mary, for the last time, will you lay off? Lay off a Lilani. Huh? <laughs> and if it's all right with you, I'd like to go back to where we were before you came in. Say, Don, did you see the reviews on the picture? They were swell, weren't they? Yes, they were, Jack, especially the one in Weekly Variety. Oh, I missed that. What did it say? It said, uh, Buck Bunny is very good entertainment. Well. And that Mark Sandridge, the director, had again exercised his hypnotic influence over you. Well, that's very... Hypnotic influence? What do they mean by that? Well, I suppose it means that you're just a fair actor, but that Mr. Sandridge hypnotized you into being a great one. Hypnotized me? Well, that's a lot of baloney. I wasn't hypnotized at all. Then why were you laying in that department store window for a week? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hope I was decent. <laughs> Wait till I see Mark Sandridge. Take it easy, Trilby. Well, if you think I'm going to stand for that... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. What are you burned up about? I just found out something. Were you ever hypnotized, Phil? What do you mean? You know, where everything goes blank and you don't know where you are. Yeah. Boy, was I hypnotized last night. 
Phil, there's a difference between hypnotized and paralyzed. <laughs> so you were out celebrating, eh? Why not? Did you see the swell notices I got on our picture? What notices? Here's one right here. Get a load of this in yesterday's paper. Hmm. It says, Phil Harris definitely scores both as a comedian and a dramatic actor. Well. Let's have more of this sterling artist in pictures. <laughs> Let's see that. Hey, wait a minute. That's not a movie review. That's in the letters to the editor column. Well, what about it? The public writes them, don't they? Public nothing. This letter is signed F. Remley. And Frank Remley is your guitar player. <laughs> of all the nerve. Take it easy, Jackson. Just because Frankie works for me don't mean he ain't sincere. <laughs> Look, Phil, that's silly. All your friends know that you two are always together. Why didn't he sign the letter anonymous? That's it, Frankie. That's the word we were trying to think of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. Phil Harris definitely scores. Look how he spells definitely. D-E-A-F. <laughs> you know, Phil, I hate to ask a sterling artist like you to play a band number right now, but we're about due for one, so get going. Say, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. I didn't see you. What I, do you want? I just want to tell you how much I enjoyed your picture the other night. Well, that's very nice of you, Dennis. And I want to thank you for showing me to that swell seat down in front. Dennis! <laughs> Now, forget it. Go ahead, Phil. Showing him to a seat. Hey, what is this? Jack's working his way through the Paramount this week. All right, now, fellas, I've had just about enough of this. I haven't been working at the Paramount. I'm not an usher there, and I'm still running this program. Now, go ahead, Phil. Play something. Okay. You want a hot tune like Benny Goodman or a sweet tune like Guy Lombardo? Just play a blow-the-roof-off tune, as only you can do it. <laughs> Soft tune like Guy Lombardo, yeah. <laughs> Hit it. Hold it a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. You know, Phil, no matter what you play, it always sounds... Hello? Like... Yes, he's here. It's for you, Jack. Mr. Whitman calling. Mr. Whitman? He says he's the manager of the Paramount Theater. Oh, yes. I better talk to him out in the hall. What's the matter with this phone? It's none of your business. I'll be right back, fellas. I wonder what he wants. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Whitman. Yes? Yes, this is number 32. <laughs> What's that? Aisle four is in an uproar? Well, I can't help that. I'm a balcony man myself. I know, but Mr. Whitman... But... But... Hurry up, Jack. I'll be there in a minute, Mary. But... Now, wait a minute, Mr. Whitman. I don't care if I did make a mistake. You're not going to transfer me to Flatbush. All right, I'll be over in a little while. Goodbye. Oh, gone more complications. I knew I should have got someone to do my broadcast for me today. All right, Phil, go ahead with your number. What does the manager of the Paramount want to talk to you about? Mary got it wrong. It was the Paramount Clothing Company. They're making a suit for me. And they're sending the coat right over. But the pants are going to Flatbush. <laughs> now, Mary, I told you to lay off. Okay, 32. What's she talking about? Play, Phil. Mary, 32 is my waist measurement. Nah. <laughs> That was Woodpecker Song, played by Phil Harris and his Peter Van Steeden Stooges. <laughs> you know, Phil, I like these boys you borrowed from Van Steeden better than your own band. You do? Sure, they're real musicians. You notice how they keep their eyes on you when you're directing a number? Yeah, why do they do that? It makes me feel self-conscious. <laughs> well, it is a new experience for you. But, Phil, I noticed when the boys played just now, the fellow with the flute seemed to be way off. He sounded pretty bad. Nick Jackson, that's Van Steeden himself. Van Steeden? Sure. Come on over here, Pete. I want you to meet Jack Benny. Nuts to him! <laughs> Nuts to you, too! Come on over here. <laughs> well, you got a nice reception there. How are you, Mr. Van Steeden? I feel like a piano. Grand. Not bad for a starter, eh, Phil? <laughs> Well, he's from the Allen program, all right. Hey, lay off of him, Jackson. Van Steeden's got a terrific sense of humor. Thanks, Zeb. Okay, Zeke. What a team. Zeb and Zeke, they make me seek. You said it. Hey, Van Steeden, this is uh, Mary Livingston. Well, glad to meet you. How about stepping out tonight, Livy? You should Livy so long. <laughs> 
Mary, don't be crudy. He's Mr. Harris's guest. <laughs> well, what? he's got a lot of nerve. I just met him, and right away he wants me to have dinner with him in the El Morocco. Mary, he didn't say a word about the El Morocco. Well, that's where we're going. Oh, you got it all settled. You hear that, Pete? You and Mary are going to the El Morocco. I ain't no Arab. Get it, Phil? <laughs> Mm, Lulu yet, huh? Say, Jackson, what? did you hear him and I on Us the People the other night? <laughs> what? What was that, Phil? I said, did you hear him and I on Us the People? <laughs> That's we the people. I don't know how a pair like you could ever do a guest shot on an intelligent program. Oh, uh, you don't, huh? Well, no. get a load of this. Yeah. They've even asked us to go on another big program Tuesday night. Imitation, please. <laughs> Imitation, please. He means inflation, please. That's information, please. You two guys couldn't get on that program if Maxie Rosenblum asked the question. <laughs> and that went better even than Abe Lyman. <laughs> Believe me. Listen, brother. What? Brother, you wouldn't be so hot on that program yourself. Oh, I wouldn't, eh? Well, here's some news for you, Phil. I was invited to go on Information, Please, only last week, but I didn't accept the offer. Why not? You didn't know anything. I knew enough not to go on, didn't I? <laughs> Say, Pete, let me ask you something. How long have you been band leader on the Fred Allen program? Oh, about five years. Five years with Allen? Oh, my goodness. How can you stand it? It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> I understand, huh? I get it, kid. <laughs> well, Peter, you can go back to your band and sit down now. We've got to continue with our program. Okay, Jackson. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, let's see. Oh, Dennis. Yes, please? It's about time for your song. What's it going to be tonight? Huh? I'm going to sing Say It from your new picture. And I dedicate it to my girlfriend, Miss Fifi LaRose. Dennis, we had that all thrashed out. I told you Fifi's my girl, so forget about her. Oh, Jack, I think it's a crime. Dennis gets a girl and you take her away from him. Well, she's a gold digger and I don't want Dennis going out with her. But, Jack, you're hardly the type of fella that would go out with a gold digger. Don't worry about me, Don. I can handle him. I'll say you can. Tell Don what you pulled last night. Never mind. What was it, Mary? Fifi wanted to go to the store club and Jack told her it was a maternity hospital. <laughs> Well, it worked. <laughs> anyway, we we saw a wonderful movie instead. I was Rochester in it. Shut up. <laughs> now, Dennis, as long as you're standing there with your mouth open, you might as well go into your song. <laughs> that uh, was Say It by Frank Lesser and Jimmy McHugh, sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris's orchestra, which is really Peter Van Steeden's. Except Frank Remley, the guitar player, who still thinks he's in Hollywood. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that we are going to do an additional broadcast from New York City. Next Sunday, for our feature attraction, we are going to offer our version of one of radio's outstanding clam bakes. The program we are going to satirize comes to you every Wednesday night and is headed by a guy who eats Cracker Jack all year so he'll have Christmas presents for his friends. <laughs> Uh, this ex-juggler also killed Vaudeville. Say, Jack, if you're referring to Fred Allen, you've got a lot of nerve to say that he killed Vaudeville. Well, he did kill Vaudeville. He sent Powers Elephants back to India. <laughs> and you, back to ushering. Now, cut that out, Mary. Cut that out, lest you do a guest appearance in Gimbel's basement. <laughs> anyway, folks, be sure and tune in next Sunday for our version of Town Hall Tonight. Say, Jack, while we're on the subject of Fred Allen, wasn't Rochester swell on his program Wednesday night? What? What'd you say? Rochester was on the Fred Allen show. Sure, didn't you hear him, Jackson? Well, of course not. He sure spilled the beans on you, Mr. Benny. You mean he had the nerve to go on Allen's program and discuss my private life? Yeah. <laughs> Rochester said he had to strap water wings on you before you got in the bathtub. That's a lie. I don't even wear them in my swimming pool anymore. I got it right this time. Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that my valet would be so disloyal. It ain't his fault. Alan asked him questions and Rochester just answered them. Well, that's the most embarrassing thing I ever heard of. The idea of telling Alan I hide money in my mattress. He never mentioned that. Oh. <laughs> Why don't I keep my mouth shut? <laughs> Mary, get me Rochester on the phone. What's his number? It's the Teresa Hotel up in Harlem. I've got the number right here. It's Lennox 888-COME-7. <laughs> and hurry. Okay. I'll fix him. Now, Jack, don't be too harsh. Remember, they're putting on a tremendous celebration for him up there. I'll say they are. Why, do you know, I passed the Teresa Hotel the other day, and there was a big banner clear across the front of it saying, Rochester's Headquarters. That burns me up. Burns you up? Why? Why? Because at my hotel, the Sherry Netherlands, all I did was hang a little handkerchief out of the window to dry, and they made me take it in. <laughs> That's why. Hello, Teresa Hotel. I'd like to speak to Rochester Van Jones, please. Give me that phone. Hello? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Rochester? Yeah, just a minute. I'll see if he's unpreoccupied. <laughs> Unpreoccupied or not, I want to talk to him. Uh, who shall I say is calling, please? In other words, who is you? <laughs> who is I? Who is you? I- I'm Mr. Van Jones' secretary, Mr. D. Whip. <laughs> well, I'm Mr. Benny, Rochester's boss. So put him on. Yeah, okay, Mr. Benny, okay. Uh, get off his lap, sugar. He's wanted on the phone. <laughs> I'll find out what's going on. Who? Is this who I think it is? <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> yes, Rochester, this is Mr. Benny. And I'm awfully sorry to disturb you, but there are a few questions I'd like to ask. In the first place, how can you afford to have a secretary? That makes three of us worrying about the same thing. <laughs> well, you should worry. Now, Rochester, getting down to business, and I want the truth. Were you on Mr. Allen's program last Wednesday? Which Mr. Allen? Mr. Fred Allen. Were you on his program? Uh, let me check on that. Oh, the whip. Never mind that. <laughs> now, let me ask you something, Rochester. Who gave you permission to appear on Mr. Allen's program? Mr. Allen? Oh, he did. Well, listen, who do you get paid by, Mr. Allen or me? I had a little trouble with both of you. <laughs> well, I could have told you you'd have had trouble with him. What'd he give you for appearing there? Toothpaste, salopatica, a smile of beauty, and a very little cash. <laughs> I thought so. I thought so. Say, boss, I don't know whether I ought to tell you this, but Mr. Allen made me an offer. He wants me to be his valet. I don't know what he wants with a valet. He's only got one suit. Well, it needs prison. <laughs> you said it. Now, Rochester, what did you do about this offer? I turned him down, boss. Well, thanks, Rochester. I couldn't leave you. Well, thanks. I'm in too deep. <laughs> Rochester, if you're referring to the back salary I owe you, I'm saving it for you. Later on, I'm going to give it to you in a lump. I'd rather have you dribble it now. <laughs> Look, Rochester, I didn't call you up to talk finance. I just want you to understand that you're not to appear on Mr. Allen's program again without my permission. Okay, boss. Make a note of that, DeWitt. <laughs> And another thing, you can fire that secretary. That wouldn't do no good. He's a relative. I don't care what he is. Now, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. What? Is it true we're going to stay here one more week? Yes, we are. I'll never make it. So long, boy. <laughs> what a guy. I call up to ball him out and nothing happens. Say, Jack, are you really saving Rochester's money for him? I certainly am, Don. Someday he'll thank me for it. Hey, Mary? Well, personally, I think Oh, that... look what time it is. Play, Phil. You'll have to hold that for next week, Mary. Say, Jack. What? The manager of the Paramount just called up and said you better get over there right away or else. Oh, yes. I must hurry. Lucky I got my uniform on during my... Uh, under my suit. Good night, folks. <laughs> this is the National Broadcasting Company. The Jell-O program coming to you from the stage of the Ritz Theater in New York City, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that tonight marks the ninth radio anniversary of our Master of Ceremonies. So without further ado, we bring you a man who for nine long years in the field of radio has worked, slaved, worried, and looks it, 
Jack Benny. Well, tell me, Jack, when you made your radio debut, your first sponsor was Canada Dry Ginger Ale, wasn't it? Well, that was my first big program, Don. But before that, I did an early morning broadcast for Bixby's Bonnie Biscuit Batter. <laughs> for the lazy housewife. Our slogan was Bixby's Batter as light as a feather. <laughs> Oh, it was very popular. Bixby's Biscuit Batter. I don't remember that program, Jackson. Well, Phil, as I was telling Don, we went on very early in the morning. From 7 to 7.05. It's uh, just a short broadcast. Oh, well, that explains it. I seldom get up at 7 a.m. Phil, you seldom get in at 7 a.m. We've been in New York now almost three weeks, and I'll bet you haven't been to bed once. Well, it ain't my fault. I can't find my hotel. Can't find your hotel. Phil, for your information, you checked in at the St. Moritz the first day we got in town. The St. Moritz? Yes. I better write that down. I gotta get some sleep tonight. (laughs) That's not a bad idea. So, Jack, getting back to Bixby's Biscuit Batter, what sort of a program was it? Did you give morning exercises and all that? Uh, No, Don. I used to read recipes and poetry. I was known as Happy Jack, your seven o'clock whistle. And my theme song was so cute. Would you like to hear it, fellas? Sure. Do you remember it, Jack? Do I? I wrote it. Uh, get a load of this. <laughs> wake up. Wake up. Wake up, you little sleepy head. Get your body out of bed. It's fixed be batter time. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, Mr. Smith and Mrs. Jones, do not be a lazy bones. It's fixed be batter time. Whether you sleep on your tummy or on your back, wake up with happy jack. It's seven one. <laughs> there, how's that, fellas? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, that'd be pretty corny nowadays. Yeah. Corny nothing. That's class, bub. <laughs> Thanks, Hezekiah. <laughs> Anyway, Don, my listeners liked it. It was a pleasure to start each day off with a smile. But I can't understand how you could be Happy Jack at 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that was nothing, Don. Before I got that job, I was on another program that went on at 5 a.m. 5 a.m.? Yeah, the only fan letters I got were from four roosters and a sleepwalker. (laughs) Anyway, it was good training. Say, Jackson, what's the name of my hotel again? The St. Moritz. Write it down. Anyway, Don... I wonder if I got a room with a bath. I hope so. (laughs) Anyway, Don, it was good training, and it gave me a swell start in radio. Ah, but I can't get over it. Broadcasting at 5 o'clock in the morning. You didn't have a sponsor then, did you? I certainly did. I was on the air for Newton's non-roll nightshirt. <laughs> Their slogan was, your kneesies will never feel the breezy. I was on the air for 13 weeks, and I think I'm the only guy that bought one of those nightshirts. And you're still wearing it. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. And you're wrong again. I don't wear a nightshirt. I sleep in pajamas, coat and pants. And a cap. <laughs> All right. I maybe have one outfit like that, and you make an issue of it. <laughs> well, you might at least congratulate me on my ninth radio anniversary. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Congratulations on your anniversary. And may you continue to spread joy and sunshine for many years to come. Well... Thanks. You make that up yourself? No, that was on the telegram. I was too cheap to send you. Oh, well, it's a thought that counts, I guess. You know, Mary, you are... Hey, Jackson, what street is the St. Moritz on? (laughs) Central Park South, for heaven's sake. It's our last night in town. He's worrying about what hotel he's stopping at. Our last night in town? Are we going back to Hollywood tomorrow? Yep, first thing in the morning. Gee whiz, and I promised Mom I'd get over to Plainfield and see her again. I better call her up right away. Oh, yes, Mary. Your folks do live here in the East. How are they? Mom is fine. Pop is fine. My sister's married. And Uncle Otto, who came to visit us eight years ago, is staying for a third term. (laughs) Well, there's all the news in a nutshell. Go ahead and call your mother up, Mary, and make it snappy. Okay. Hello, operator. Give me long distance, please. Hey, Don, have you seen Dennis around anywhere? Well, yes, Jack. He's there someplace. A long distance? I want Plainfield, New Jersey, please. The number is 223J. Hurry it up, Mary. We got... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Congratulations on your radio anniversary. Well, thanks, Dennis. Say, what's that you're hiding in back of you? Oh, that's a cake I brought for you. It's got nine candles on it, one for each year. A cake? Well, well, that's just... Hello? 
Hello, Peter's Meat Market. <laughs> uh, will you please run upstairs and call Mrs. Livingston to the phone? Peter's Meat Market? Oh, is that you, Mr. Peters? This is Mary, remember? Oh, I'm fine. Say, Mr. Peters, do you still give away garters with leg of lamb? <laughs> Mary, hurry up and get your mother. Uh, will you call Mama, please? Okay, I'll wait. How do you like the cake, Mr. Benny? Oh, it's swell, Dennis. And the candles are all lit, aren't they? Well, blow them out, Jack. It's your anniversary. Okay. Hold her steady, Dennis. Here goes. <clears throat> hmm. Well, you got one of them. <laughs> yeah, hold it closer, Dennis. Here you are. <clears throat> Darn it. Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. This is Mary. Look, Mama, I won't be able to come over tomorrow because we're leaving for Hollywood. Yes, first thing in the morning What's the matter with me? What's that, Mama? Oh, that's Jack, he's got asthma I haven't got asthma, I'm trying to blow out these candles Well, I'm ashamed to tell her I'll get them, don't worry Listen, Mama, couldn't you come into New York tonight? The only chance I'll get to see you. See him flicker, fellas? <laughs> well, all right, Mom. I'll expect you the first thing in the morning. Oh, you saw Buck Benny rise again last night? Well, how do you like Jack as a cowboy? He what? <laughs> Well, everybody else likes me. Now, hang up. All right. Goodbye, Mama. See you tomorrow. You should stop asking your mother what she thinks of me. She's always got those same two words. And what a delivery. Well, I don't like it. Now, Dennis, it's about time for a song, so go ahead. Okay, Mr. Benny. Aren't you going to blow out the rest of the candles? Never mind. Just sing your song. Everybody's so worried about me. <laughs> there. That got him. Doggone it. Here's the chair, Jack. You better rest for a while. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. <laughs> That was How High the Moon from Two for the Show, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, this is the last number you're going to do from New York. Next week, we'll be back home in California. Gee, it'll be good to see the sun again, won't it? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Dennis. It might have been raining and cloudy most of the time, but the sun was out all day today. I think that was just a publicity stunt for the opening of the fair. <laughs> That's possible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last hey, week... Hey, Jackson, how do you spell St. Moritz? <laughs> Never mind, I'll take you there. <laughs> Heaven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Phil, next time, stay at the YMCA. It's already spelled out for you. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, Tonight, the Benny, even our best friends won't tell us players, will present their version of that well-known Wednesday night taffy pull, the Fred Allen Show, The Hour of Smiles. Thank you. Thank you, Bean Blossom. Now, being a martyr, I will play the most unattractive part, that of Mr. Allen. Uh, Don Wilson will be Harry Von Zell, and Phil Harris will be Peter Van Steeten. You think you can handle the part, Phil? I don't know. I'm a little more blasé than he is. Well, at rehearsal, folks, he said blazy. <laughs> uh, you'll handle it all right, Phil. Now, let's see. Uh, who else do we need? Am I going to be in a Jack? Yes, Mary. You're going to play the part of Portland Hoffa. Well, that's the best Hoffa I had today. <laughs> Mary, let's not get into Alan's type of material too soon. <laughs> now, Dennis? Yes, please? In our play tonight, you're going to be a bottle of salopatica. <laughs> so go over in the medicine chest and sit down. Okay. Oh, boy, salopatica. What a kid. Gee, I wish I could be that happy. Why don't you empty your swimming pool and dive in? Thanks. Well, I guess we're just about set now. But, Jack, how are you going to play the part of Fred Allen? Your voice isn't anything like his. Don, all I have to do is put a clothespin on my nose. I've got one right here. And now, folks, this little satire will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by Peter Van Harris and his dead panna troubadour. <laughs> Hit it, boy. <laughs> 
That was Alice Blue Gown from Irene, played by Peter Van Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our tabloid version of that Wednesday night weenie bay, that sand in the spinach of life, the Fred Allen Show. Mary, hand me that clothespin. Here you are, Jack. I want to Allenize my nose here. Wait a minute. Just a second. I want to get that on. Good. Let's see now. Uh, me, 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 That's him, all right. Okay, let's go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Von Wilson welcoming you to the Hour of Groans. 60 minutes of eggs and music. Eggs with our star comedian, Fred Allen. Music with Peter Van Harris. And our three songbirds, the Merry Mucks. So duck, everybody. It's the Fred Allen Show. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the man you've all been waiting for. The pride of Boston. That New England boiled comedian, Fred Allen, in person! Thank you, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Harry, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio tonight. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I was walking down 6th Avenue, and a panhandler asked me for a dollar bill for a cup of coffee. A dollar bill? Yes, he claimed there was a hole in his pocket, and a coin would slip through. Ho, ho, ho. (laughs) Thank you, folks. Thank you. Well, so much for good, clean fun. And now let us turn to the latest news of the week. Harlem, New York. This dusky community is still carrying on a celebration for Rochester Van Jones, butler to Jack Benny, the radio comedian. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> News of the Week interviews Mr. Van Jones. Pardon me, Mr. Van Jones. I'm a reporter, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Tell me, have you been having a good time up here in Harlem? Have I? This turban I'm wearing is full of ice cubes. <laughs> I see. Now, Mr. Van Jones, I understand you're in the employ of a Mr. Jack Benny. Is that correct? I work for him, all right. Now, what sort of a man is Mr. Benny? He's very pleasant. Very pleasant. I see. Well, is he hard to get along with? Oh, no, sir. He's the finest man I ever met. Pure gold. Pure gold. Uh-huh. Now, there are rumors, Rochester, that Mr. Benny is rather tight and you have trouble getting your salary from him. Is that true? Oh, no, sir. He not only pays me handsomely, but frequently. <laughs> I see. And you're sure of all of this is the truth? Definitely. Well. That clothes bin don't fool me none. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Mr. Van Jones, and I'll see you later. So long. So long, boss. That was Peter Van Harris playing. Da 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 da. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may be so bold. Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, look who's here. I'll be darned if it isn't Seattle. Hello! <laughs> Well, that's quite a reception you've got, Tacoma. What's on your mind? Oh, Mr. Allen, the funniest thing happened to me on the way to the studio tonight. I was walking down 6th Avenue and a panhandler asked me for a nickel. Only a nickel? (laughs) Yes, he said he had his pants fixed with that dollar you gave him. Well, that's very funny, Spokane, and I wish this eagle would get off my hat. (laughs) Shoo! Now, what about our guest tonight? He's right here, Mr. Allen, and his hobby is a most unusual one. Really? (laughs) Yes, this gentleman is an amateur street cleaner. Well, that's very interesting. How do you do, sir? Hiya, Chum. (laughs) Now, young fellow, how did you happen to develop such an unusual hobby? Well, I tell you, Chum, I'm walking down the street one day, and all of a sudden I see some mug in a top hat throw away a longie. A longie? Yeah, a cigar. A butt that has possibilities. I see. So I picks it up, and I've been doing that ever since. Oh, you're a bump. 
Yeah. Well, one more won't hurt this show. Forty. Now tell me, my retriever of nicotine. <laughs> tell me, what type of men throw away stogies with the greatest possibility of salvage? Well, bankers mostly. But once in a while, I get some actor. Yes, actors are notoriously carefree. Yeah, all but Jack Benny. That guy don't throw him away till his bridge work is on fire. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Well, thanks for coming up. Now get out. <laughs> Quaint fellow, wasn't he? Now, Harry. Yes, Fred. As the farmer said to the horse thief, <laughs> where's my plug? Ladies and gentlemen, we now take you to a typical American home. The husband speaks. Oh, Lulu, where's that tube of Ipana? It's right there, honey, right behind that bottle of sal hepatica. There's nothing behind me. <laughs> Dennis, screw your top off. <laughs> Well, Lulu, i got to brush my teeth. All right, then run down to the drugstore and get some eye panna. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, our own musical madcaps, the Merry Mucks, will render a special arrangement of that popular song entitled, She Was Only a Pipe Maker's Daughter, But Oh, What Stamp. <laughs> Swing it, Mucks. Ma, he's making eyes at me. Ma, 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 he's awful nice to me. Ma, he's almost breaking my heart. I'm beside him. Be my honey. Be my honey. Don't run, don't run, don't run. Oh, he's leaning on my shoulder, Ma. He's kissing my hand. He's kissing Ma. 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 All right, for heaven's sake. My goodness. Well, we got to break it up tonight. <laughs> that was Ma, he's making eyes at me, sung by the Merry Mucks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, look at that man in the control room waving his finger at me. Our program is running overtime, folks, but that always happens. I ad-lib like mad. <laughs> but we still have a few minutes left for the question of the week. This is Mr. and Mrs. Average Man's Roundtable, where three persons selected from our studio audience are invited to give their opinions on a question that concerns some prominent issue of the day. These little sessions are entirely unrehearsed. Oh, yeah? Portland. Continue, Harry. Fred now takes his place at the round table where he meets his fellow debaters for the first time. Ready, Fred? I'm all set, Harry. Uh, where are the three participants tonight, Portland? Right there, Mr. Allen. The first one is Mr. Abner J. Lum of Inner Zipper, Alabama. Good evening, Mr. Lum. Hello, Ma. <laughs> Our next guest is Miss Minnie Tonka of Minneapolis Men. Minnie Tonka. Well, glad to have you with us, Miss Tonka. Tonka very much. Mm. <laughs> now, who's our third guest, Porty? Oh, there I go, ad living again. The name is Blur here, Mr. Allen. I can't make it out. Oh, yes. What's your name, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jerkfinkle. <laughs> Oh, fine. Yes, the name is Logan Jerkfinkle. <laughs> well, I might as well make the best of it. Now, Logan, here's the question of the week. Quiz me, kid. <laughs> All right, here it is. Do you think the National Labor Relations Board presents the optimum hope for the... Oh, my goodness, there's that man in the control room again. With all my ad-libbing and everything, I suppose we won't have time for the question. Wait, I'll find out. Have we got time for the question, Tommy? I don't know. Hey, Eddie, have we got time for the question? I don't know. Hey, Phil, have we got time for the question? I don't know. Hey, Phil! Hey, let it go! Let it go! I forgot what it was anyway. My goodness, play, Peter. I must stop this ad-libbing. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Don is closed in. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. Mary, help me pull this clothespin off. Oh, leave it there. On you, it's becoming. <laughs> All right. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our program tonight, we're going to reenact the events which occurred on our recent airplane trip from New York to Los Angeles. The time is last Monday morning, and as the scene opens, a taxi cab carrying Jack and Mary is approaching the New York Municipal Airport on Long Island. Well, Mary, we sure had a lot of fun in New York, didn't we? Shows, nightclubs, and everything. I bet it was pretty expensive, eh, Jack? All right, so it ran into money. But who cares? And how often do I go to New York? How often do I get on a spree? How often does Paramount pay your expenses? <laughs> I don't care. I still feel like a playboy. That's you, a nice, on-the-cuff playboy. Anyway, I had fun. Hey, driver, step on it, will you? I don't want to miss the plane. Your wish is my command. <laughs> well, polite fellow, isn't he? Oh, boy, wait till Paramount sees your expense account. Mary, there's nothing wrong with it. Here it is right here, itemized and everything. Look, meals, room, tips, taxi cabs, it's all legitimate. How you gonna explain this item? Blue suit, $85. I bought that suit to make a personal appearance at the Paramount Theater. I wore it on the stage and everybody saw it. Underwear, four fifty. What did you do, a strip tease? <laughs> Mary, let Paramount worry about my underwear, will you? And driver, a little faster, please. We want to get there. It is yours to request, mine to obey. <laughs> well, thanks. My, isn't he formal? Say, Jack, what's this on your list? Tips, $18. Gratuity, 37 well, What's wrong with that? They mean the same thing. They do not. Tips is dimes, and gratuities is from a quarter up. <laughs> so mind your own business. Gee, look what time it is. Well, jeepers creepers, this tops everything. Now what? Shoelaces, five cents. <laughs> Give me that list. You're not supposed to see it anyway. Hey, driver, that's the airport right ahead, isn't it? It's mine to drive, yours to point out. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> Yep, that's the airport, all right. Wow, look at all those planes. Yeah, just think, 18 hours and we'll be in California. You know, Mary, the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. Unquote, I read the folder, too. <laughs> well, it's very impressive. Well, here we are. I hope the rest of the gang are here. How much do I owe you, driver? That'll be $2. $2, here you are. And, oh, yes, uh, here's a tip for you. Couldn't you make that a gratuity? <laughs> All right, here's a quarter. Goodbye, driver. Goodbye. If you like me, tell your friends. If not, tell it to Sweeney. <laughs> 16,000 cab drivers in New York, and I have to get a philosopher. Come on, Mary, the others are probably inside. Here comes John Wilson now. Where? Oh, yes, and Dennis is with him. Hey, fellas! Well, hello, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hey, well, Dennis, a few minutes more, and we'll all be flying back to California. Are you thrilled? I'll say. But you know, Mr. Benny, I've never flown before. Is it scary? No, there's nothing to it. I love it. What are you talking about? You've never been up in a plane before in your life. I've never been up in a plane? No. Then how come in Waukegan they used to call me Wings Benny? <laughs> That's because your shoulder blade stuck out. <laughs> oh, sister, are you pressing? Now, where's Rochester with the luggage? Maybe he's in the waiting room. Yeah, let's go in. Come along, Dennis. Say, so, Jack, did you have any trouble persuading Rochester to fly? Well, he was pretty scared, Don, but I finally convinced him that the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. That sold him. Gee, it's a beautiful station, isn't it, Mary? Yeah, I'm going over to get a magazine. Okay. Bring me a couple of cigars. You want those stinkers or is Paramount paying for them? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Get good ones. Attention, please. TWA Flight 9, the Sky Chief to Los Angeles, now loading at gate number 10. All aboard, please. You hear that? They're loading the plane, and Rochester isn't even here yet. You don't have to worry about Phil Harris. There he is over there. Oh, yeah. And look at that beautiful girl with him. 
Yeah. That's for me. Dennis, come back here. Well, I'll go over and get Phil. Be right back, fellas. Well, we'll be shoving off pretty soon, honey. Gosh, I hate to leave you. Gee, Philby, I'll be so lonesome without you. Sure had a lot of fun these last couple of weeks, huh, sugar? It's been heavenly. Oh, hello, Phil. I didn't see you. Hiya, Jackson. You all set to leave? Yep. And, well... Who's this gorgeous creature? Oh, uh, pardon me. Jackson, I'd like you to meet Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh... Oh, fine. <laughs> Some romance. What is your name, honey? Minnie Jerkfinkle. <laughs> Jerkfinkle? Yes, my brother Logan is one of your most... Most ardent fans, I know. I know I met him. Well, it's a pleasure, Miss Jerkfinkle. Give my regards to your brother. Come on, Phil. We got to get going. Goodbye, Philzy. So long. See you next year, uh, uh, uh Minnie. Uh, Minnie. <laughs> hey, that's a good-looking girl, Phil. Where'd you meet her? My guitar player introduced her to me. Oh. Well, how did he meet her? I pointed her out to him. <laughs> oh, the old one, too, eh? You know, Phil, if you... Well, look who's here. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Rochester. Have you got the luggage weighed and everything? Uh-huh. Well, then, come on. Let's get on the plane. You know, boss, I've been pounding on this, and I think I'll go by train. What do you mean? You take the high road, and I'll take the low road. <laughs> and I'll be in Los Angeles behind you. <laughs> now, Rochester, don't be such a coward. Why, flying today is wonderful. It's just as safe as walking down the street. In fact, it's safer. Boss, you're talking to a man that comes from a long line of Pullman porters. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. You want to go back to Hollywood, don't you? Yes, but I don't want to ride on nothing where there's nothing under it. <laughs> oh, Rochester, you're silly. Flying is the greatest thing in the world. You ever see a bird that wasn't happy? Well, the day I wake up with feathers on, I'll try it. <laughs> Listen, Rochester, I've told you a thousand times that the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a barrett. Okay, of... let's go. <laughs> More like it. Come on. Here's your cigar, Jack. Thanks. What's that you got there? It's a movie magazine. It's got your picture on the cover. Let's see that. Oh, yeah. In color, too. See, my, my eyes sure look blue, don't they? <laughs> hey, fellas, look at this magazine with my picture on it. <laughs> oh, Jack, take it easy. I'm going over and get a few more copies of this. Attention, please. TWA Sky Chief, Flight 9, leaving immediately. All aboard. Hurry up, Jack. Never mind the magazine. Yeah, the heck with them. The heck with them, nothing. It'll only take a second. Hey, young fella, give me a half a dozen copies of that magazine with my picture on it. Take a dozen. They ain't selling. <laughs> all right, give me all of them. Here's your money. Come on, Jack. The plane's ready to leave. I'm coming. Here, Rochester, take these magazines. Are you sure you want me to go with you, boss? Yes, get going. Okay. Doggone, if this plane is the eighth wonder, I'm the ninth for getting on it. And stop talking to yourself. Come on, Jack. We're coming. We're coming. Gee, isn't this marvelous up here? Hey, Mary, see the airport way down there? Yeah, it sure looks small, doesn't it? Yep. How do you feel, Dennis? Oh, boy, this is fun. It sure is. Hey, Rochester, look at the airport. Way, way down there. Describe it to me. I ain't looking. <laughs> what a baby. Jack, we're flying over the East River now. Look at the skyline of New York below us. Oh, yeah. Isn't that thrilling? Rochester, look at that skyline. Boss, please. <laughs> Open your eyes. Hey, Phil! Phil! What do you want, Jackson? Excuse me a minute, honey. Honey? <laughs> a fine way to talk to the air hostess. You don't even know her. I don't, huh? Her name is Miss Rutherford. She's single, comes from Texas, hasn't got a steady boyfriend, and what am I waiting for? <laughs> You've only been on this plane two minutes. She is pretty, though. That's for me! Oh, you and your that's for me! Say, Jack. What? We're up in the air now. Why don't you unstrap your safety belt? Because you're not supposed to. I'm not taking this belt off until we get to Los Angeles. That's the rule. Why, Jack, you're only supposed to strap yourself when the plane takes off and when it lands. Don, you're not talking to a greenhorn. I've been up before. Go on, you haven't been up in the air since you played Little Eva in Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> it wasn't me, that was my sister Florence. I played a bloodhound in that. And I got a blue ribbon, too. <laughs> well, well, is everybody comfortable up here? How are you, Mr. Benny? Oh, I'm fine, Miss Rutherford. Just fine. You know, Mr. Benny, you can unstrap your belt now. Oh. 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 Have they changed the rules? 
You see, in the old days, when I was a test pilot, uh, we used to stay uh, strapped in all the time. Oh, were you a test pilot? Yes. You used to try out pitchforks in a livery stable. <laughs> Mary, will you stop? Will you stop dreaming things up? Oh, Miss Rutherford, my ears have been buzzing a little bit. Is that on account of the altitude? Yes. That's caused by air pressure on the eardrums. Now, just swallow real hard and you'll be all right. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> there, that did it. Thanks. Well, Mr. Benny, my ears are buzzing, too. Well, just swallow, Dennis, like I did. Go ahead, real hard. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Dennis, you ought to have your skull x-rayed sometime. I think there's something wrong there. Oh, uh, Miss, when are we going to have lunch? Right after we leave Chicago, Mr. Wilson. Well, thank you. We just had breakfast. Oh, Miss Rutherford, would you adjust my seat for me, please? I want to sit back and relax. Why, certainly. There you are. Thanks. No, we seem to be climbing higher all the time. Oh. <laughs> there I go again. Me too. I wonder what does that. Just think, five hours ago we were in New York and now we're pulling out of Chicago. Say, Jack, look at that little old lady that just got on. Oh, yes. She's reading that movie magazine with your picture on the cover. She is? Well... Um, pardon me, madam. You know, that's my picture there on the cover. Eh? I said that's my picture on the cover. They sure touched it up, didn't they? Well, a little, but I think it's a good likeness. Hey, Rochester, you feel better now? Oh, I feel fine, boss. Good. How about playing a game of casino? I left the cards at home. Well, what of it? We can get a deck of cards from the hostess. I can't win with them. Oh, ho! So that's it. Well, Rochester, that $9,000 I owe you is automatically canceled. Oh, Mr. Benny, if you look out of the window now, you'll notice that we're passing over Waukegan. Waukegan? Oh, boy! Everybody stop reading and look out the window. Hey, Phil, look at Waukegan. Don't bother me. I'm doing a crossword puzzle. Look, Mary, there's the city hall. Oh, yeah, I see the dome. Well, I'll be darned. There's Mayor Talcott sitting on the flagpole. <laughs> hey, Bidey! Hiya, Jack! <laughs> Gee, he must have known I was going to pass through. Do you recognize everything, Mr. Benny? Sure. There's the Waukegan Hotel. There's Genesee Street. And there's my father's clothing store. And there's your father out on the sidewalk wrestling with a customer. <laughs> he is not. He waits until they get in the store. What's all the rumpus, young man? We just passed over my hometown, Waukegan. I was born there. Eh? I said I was born there. They sure touched it up, didn't they? <laughs> Oh, forget it. Gee, that was a thrill. Hey, Jackson. What? What's a three-letter word meaning opposite of woman? Man. M-A-N. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Mary, he's been working that crossword puzzle ever since we left New York. Miss Rutherford, uh, we're going to have lunch pretty soon? In just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Oh, thank you. Hey, Jackson. What? What's a nine-letter word meaning musical organization? Orchestra. Oh, yeah, that was a toughie. <laughs> and he's a musician. Say, Mr. Benny. What is it, Dennis? Well, Sunday is Mother's Day, so I was wondering if I could sing my song now and dedicate it to Miss Rutherford, our hostess. Dedicate it to Miss Rutherford? What for? Well, all during this trip, she's been just like a mother to me. Me too. <laughs> Drat it. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Hey, Jackson, orchestra don't fit. I gotta have a nine-letter word. Well, how many letters do you get out of orchestra? A. O R K I S T. Bill! <laughs> Bill, just take your pencil and make the white squares black. <laughs> That's your speed. Sing, Dennis. Okay. And stop swallowing. O R K I S. What a guy. That was
was very good, Dennis. Ought to go over swell on the program Sunday. I hope so. Say, Mary, that fried chicken looks pretty good. Give me a bite, will you? Why didn't you order some when we did? I wasn't hungry then. Oh, Miss Rutherford, I'll have a luncheon tray, please. I'll bring it right in, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Who took this magazine and drew a mustache on my picture? <laughs> did you do it, Mary? No, I didn't think of it, darn it. Well, someone did. Did you, Phil? Not me. Was it you, Dennis? No, Mr. Benny. Hmm. Well, who did? I did. You want to make something out of it? <laughs> I don't think that's very nice, madam. Hey, Rochester, get an eraser. Get an eraser and remove this mustache from my picture. Okay, boss. Should I uncross your eyes, too? <laughs> yes, and fix up that tooth she blacked out. <laughs> now, go ahead. Why can't Mr. Harris do this and I'll do the puzzle? <laughs> I don't care who does it, but get it done. By the way, Rochester, how do you like flying now? Just fine. You know, boss, I think I'll buy an airplane when I get to California. You better wait till your yacht is paid for. You're the down payingest man I ever saw. You buy more things that you can't keep. You're right, boss. I've had everything repossessed but my first wife. I'm not surprised. Here's your soup, Mr. Benny. I'll have your chicken ready in a minute. And some mashed potatoes, please. Gee, isn't this marvelous? Imagine eating soup while sailing through the air at 200 miles an hour. See, just like we were right at home. <laughs> Who pushed me? Nobody pushed you. We just hit an air pocket. Well, get me a towel. I got clam broth all over my blue suit. You mean Paramount's blue suit. I mean, get me a towel. Where's the pilot? We'll watch where he's going. Now, cut that out! Oh, Miss Rutherford, tell the pilot to watch what he's doing. Now, Mr. Benny, don't be a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> now we're pitching. Oh, boy, this is fun. Fun? Gosh, I'm getting so... Are you dizzy, young man? No, I'm all right. I'm fine. What's the trouble, Jack? No trouble at all, Don. I said I'm all right. You look kind of pale, Jack. Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. And what's that you got in your lap? The Davis Cup? <laughs> Mary, this is no time to joke. Now stop. Here's your fried chicken, Mr. Benny. Oh. <laughs> Later, please. Open that air vent a little more there, Rochester. And put down my chicken. I'll be all right in a few minutes. Okay, boss. I'm sorry. Take the chicken, Rocket. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks, boss. Can I do something for you, Jack? Yeah, stop staring at me. Well, Mr. Benny, why don't you drink a glass of water and hold your breath? Dennis, holding your breath is for hiccup. That's all you need. Gosh, I can't understand it. I felt so good just a minute ago. And now... Oh. <laughs> Everything happens at once. Wish we were in Los Angeles already. Why, Jack, this is a swell trip. You're the only one that's complaining. I can't help it. I don't feel good. <laughs> but, Jack, an old test pilot once told me that the oh. modern airplane, winging its way through the all clouds, right, is a veritable right. eighth wonder of the world. That's very interesting. <laughs> now, let me alone. Okay, Wing. Mary, please. Hey, Jackson, how do you spell lobster? Lobster? <laughs> now, cut that out, Phil! The heck with your puzzle. How do you feel now, Mr. Benny? Not so good, Miss Rutherford. Well, I'll sit right by you and hold your hand. Gee, thanks. You know, you're awfully sweet to me. Now, just relax, Mr. Benny, and I'll stroke your forehead. Ah. Look at the big movie star. Let me alone, Mary. Gee, Miss Rutherford, your hand is so soothing and so cool. So cool. <laughs> Yeah, your 
hand is so cool. So cool. Thanks, boy. <laughs> Rochester. Where's Miss Rutherford? Where's everybody? They got off the plane. We've landed. Oh, my goodness. You mean we're in Los Angeles? Sure, boys. Let's go. Well, gee, we're here already. And I feel swell. Rochester, wrap up that fried chicken. I'll eat it on the way home. Okay. Don't wrap it in my picture. Boy, just think. 18 hours from New York to Los Angeles. You know, Rochester, the modern airplane winging its way through the clouds is a veritable eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> it sure is, boss. It sure is. <laughs> And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. Before saying goodnight, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to mothers everywhere. Oh, Mary, did you send your mother a wire? Yes, I sent her a wire, some flowers, a box of candy, and a check. How much was the check? You'll find out. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who, after three hectic weeks in New York, has returned to the simple life in Southern California and resumed his favorite hobby of raising flowers. I love him. <laughs> a man who may be seen any day in his Beverly Hills garden, hoeing in his hollyhocks, digging in his dahlias, and puttering in his pansies, <laughs> Jack Benny. Thank you. Uh, Jello again. This is the man with the hoe talking. <laughs> and, Don, I'm glad uh, you gave me that introduction because it brought out a side of me that most people don't realize. Benny, the nature lover. <laughs> well, Jack, I didn't realize it myself until I read in the paper the other day that your petunias had won first prize in the Beverly Hills Flower Show. My petunias? Uh, they only won third prize, Don. They should have come in first, but they weren't trying. <laughs> weren't trying? No, they just sat there in their pots and drooped. <laughs> next year, uh, next year I'm going to enter nasturtium. They may not smell so nice, but they're always in there punching. <laughs> They'll come through. But Jack, isn't it a lot of trouble for a fellow as busy as you are to keep up a garden? Yes, but it's worth it. Why, my backyard is one of the show places of Southern California, isn't it, Mary? Especially on wash day. <laughs> I don't mean Monday. I'm talking about my flowers. Oh, they're beautiful. No kidding, Don. People come from miles around just to look at Jack's roses. They sure do. Jack is so sweet about it. Children get in for nothing. <laughs> Mary. Adults a quarter. Now, wait a minute, Mary. That 25 cents admission isn't just for the roses. It also includes a tour of the house and Carmichael's roller skating act. <laughs> Just about pays for the upkeep. I'm not trying to make my backyard commercial. Go on. I fell in your swimming pool the other day, and you charged me 15 cents for a towel. That's the standard rate all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was talking to Don about my flowers. Well, tell me, Jack, uh, what else do you raise in your garden besides petunias and roses? Oh, many varieties, Don. For instance, I have some beautiful Dianthus uh, caryophyllus. Uh, those are carnations. And then I've got some lovely Bocania cordata. Uh, those are gardenias. My goodness, Jack. I'm surprised that you have such a complete knowledge of botany. Oh, I have. For instance, Don, uh, come here a minute. For instance, uh, you wouldn't think to look at a flower that... Uh, well, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> it floored me. <laughs> And you know, Don, uh, I've been uh, very successful lately experimenting with the improvement of various species of plant life. Is that so? Well, I think it's a shame, Jack, the way you go around telling people you perfected a cactus without needles. Well, I did. That cactus in my yard doesn't have a needle on it. It's just as smooth as can be. Sure, you lather it up and shave it every morning. <laughs> I do not, and that's a fine way to talk after the break I've been giving you on flowers lately. Some break. You've been charging me 75 cents a dozen for carnations. And I can get them at the florist for 60. The white ones with the pink edges? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, hello, Phil. Hi, you kids. What's the topic of conversation? That's topic, Phil. <laughs> and we're uh, discussing flowers, a subject which would hardly intrigue you. In fact, you know nothing about them. Is that so? I love flowers. You love flowers. Certainly. Why, I woke up this morning in a bed of tulips. <laughs> 
Phil, wherever you fall, that's where you wake up. <laughs> you haven't been interested in flowers since dandelion wine went out. <laughs> And you know it. All right, so what's flowers? You smell them and throw them away. Isn't that awful? Phil, when you come over to my house next Sunday, you'll see the most beautiful garden you ever laid your eyes on. Your house next Sunday? What's going on then? Oh, didn't I tell you? I told Don and Mary before the broadcast. You see, our sponsor, Mr. Mortimer of General Foods, happens to be in town. So I'm throwing a little party for him. Incidentally, Jack, has General Foods picked up your option for next year? My option? Well, doggone... Come to think of it, no. He hasn't slept in three weeks, and he just found out why. <laughs> Mary. But you know, Don, this party will give me a swell chance to talk business with Mr. Mortimer. Oh, Jack, who do you think you're fooling? That's the only reason you're giving it. Now, wait a minute, Mary. There's no particular rush for me to sign my contract for next season. I'm not worried. Sure, you can always play your violin in Phil's orchestra. <laughs> yeah, I could. Over my dead body. <laughs> Don't be so smart, Phil. And next Sunday, when you come over to my house, you'll be very nice to Mr. Mortimer. Am I invited to your party, Mr. Benny? Why, of course, Dennis. I didn't see you. Why didn't you say something? Nobody would throw me a lead. <laughs> well, I'll throw you a lead, Dennis. Now that you've made your presence known, how about singing a song? Oh, boy, that'll be fun. There he goes again. I wonder what makes that kid so happy. Mr. Mortimer is his uncle. <laughs> he is? Say, that's swell. Sing, Dennis. Gee, I didn't know he was related to our sponsor. I might have known it, though. He's such a smart kid. <laughs> Very good, Dennis. Very good. That was the wind and the rain in her hair sung by our own little Dennis Day. Denny, I call him. <laughs> oh, uh, Dennis. Yes, please? You know, um, that's one of the most beautiful songs you've done this year. The title is so poetic, The Wind and the Rain in Her Hair. I wonder what that girl was doing out in the rain with all that wind in her hair. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from the sublime to our feature attraction of the evening, tonight, the Benny you requested, we'll molest it, players, <laughs> will present their version of that sensational MGM screen masterpiece based on Kenneth Roberts' brilliant novel of American history, that outstanding cinema achievement, Northwest Passage. Thank you, Snapdragon. <laughs> That's Dernicum Excelsium. I know what it is. <laughs> Beloin. <laughs> now, uh, as you may remember, folks, uh, this Technicolor production starred Spencer Tracy as Major Rogers, the famous explorer and Indian fighter. And Dennis, I've got a big surprise for you. You're going to be the star of our play tonight. You're going to take Spencer Tracy's part. Spencer Tracy? Oh, boy! We'll show your uncle just what you can do. What uncle? Mr. Mortimer, our sponsor. He isn't my uncle. He isn't? <laughs> Darn you, Mary. Well, anyway, Dennis, as I was saying, in our play tonight, you're going to be an Indian guy. <laughs> That's all. An Indian guide? I thought I was going to be the star. You better keep your trap shut or you won't be anything. <laughs> Had just about enough out of you. What's going on here? <laughs> Never mind. Now, um, getting back to our sketch... Inasmuch as I am a very dear friend of Spencer Tracy's, I will naturally play his part. A fine thing to do to a friend. Listen, Mary, I can handle a part. Why, well, I can do anything Spencer Tracy can do, except possibly play polo. Make it everything. You'll feel better. Okay. Now, Phil, you're going to play Robert Young's part, the map maker of our expedition. Uh, you're thrown out of Harvard College, so you join my troop of rangers. Well, why would I be thrown out of Harvard? That don't ring true. Phil, the trouble we're going to have is getting you into Harvard. <laughs> the rest will be easy. <laughs> now, uh, Mary... Yes, please? Hmm. Mary, you're going to play the part of a young girl who, as a child, was captured by the Abernathy Indians. And years later, I save you from this hostile tribe. You're some hero. Well, I am. They're very savage Indians. 
In fact, I almost lose my scalp. What do you care? You got three more hanging in your dressing room. <laughs> All right, now just for that, you might as well tear up that pass I gave you for my rose garden. <laughs> I'm voiding it. <laughs> Now, let's see. Uh, who else? What am I going to be in the play, Jack? Well, Don, you were going to be a ranger, but due to a shortage of actors, I've decided to make you a whole company of rangers. <laughs> so when I call the roll, just answer here 50 times. Do I get more money for playing all those parts? Not unless you got a certain uncle. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. Now, this epic, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Hit it, boys. Gee, Mr. Benny, why can't I play Spencer Tracy's part? Get away from me, Dennis, or I'll twist your wrist. <laughs> play, Phil. I can't stand an imposter. <laughs> uh, that was Loud, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hold on, Jackson. That's the kind of a number you gotta play loud. Phil, you could play low the gentle lark, and make it sound like eight vultures on a tin roof fighting over a xylophone. <laughs> and now, folks... Well, that's just silly. Why would vultures fight over a xylophone? They think it's spare it. <laughs> Does that clear things up, bruv? <laughs> and now, folks, for our thrilling saga of early American history. Northwest Passage or a tramp in the woods. Take it, Mr. Narrator. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the year is 1712. The scene is Crown Point, located on the Hudson River in the colony of New York. Major Rogers and his famous rangers have decided to wipe out the Abenaki Indians, a hostile tribe who have been ravaging the countryside, burning the farmers' homes, and kidnapping their wives and children. As the scene opens, the Major is addressing his men. Now listen, men, and listen carefully. For years, the Abenaki Indians, a hostile tribe, have been ravaging the countryside, burning the farmers' homes, and kidnapping their wives and children. The man just said that. <laughs> Quiet, you're not in this yet. Now, Rangers, here's my plan. We march northward this very day. Northward to Lake Champlain and the Abenaki country. It's a dangerous mission, men. And no one knows how long it'll take. We may be gone weeks, months. Perhaps years. Who's going to water your petunias? <laughs> Never mind that. Now, we're all ready to go. But first, are there any objections? Yes, we object. What's the trouble, Company C? Well, half of me have wives and children, and one of me is scared to death. <laughs> I expect mutiny. Well, take a little bicarbonate, and you'll be all set. Private Harris, did you draw the map of New York State like I told you to? All but the Hudson River. I can't make a night boat. <laughs> well, this is going to be some trip. Thank goodness we've got an Indian guide. All right, men, we must push on. And we'll wipe out those Abernaki Indians, or my name ain't... And so our little band of rangers leave Crown Point and march two full days northward. It is now noon of the third day. Rangers! Halt! I said, Rangers! Halt! Hey, fellas, stop, will you? All right, put your other foot down. What an outfit. Well, this looks like a good place to rest. Where are we, Private Harris? Well, Major, according to my map, that peak just ahead is Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta's in California, 3,000 miles from where we started. We've only been walking two days. Hey, we made good time, didn't we? <laughs> oh, marvelous. Harris, this is the worst map I've ever seen. Well, if you don't like mine, why don't you stop at a gas station and get one? Because there won't be a gas station for 200 years. Automobiles haven't been invented yet. Oh, that's right. I wish I knew where we were. Now, let's... <laughs> Look, fellas, a wild turkey. <laughs> and it nearly hit us. Well, I better ask my Indian guide where we are. Oh, Conkapot. Conkapot. Ugh, please. 
Where are we? Do you recognize those mountains up ahead? No, I don't. You're a fine Indian guide. Well, I thought I was going to be Spencer Tracy. <laughs> that was B.M., before Mortimer. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just have to march on, I guess. But, Major, we can't march anymore today. Several of my backs are sprained, and most of my feet are killing me. <laughs> Your rear guard looks a little tired. <laughs> I guess we'll have to camp here for the night. And careful, men. There's probably Indians lurking behind every bush. Oh, Big Heap! Big Heap! That's Big Heap Major. <laughs> what do you want, Conkapot? Look, Major, white girl. White girl? Where? Oh, yes. Hello, there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What are you doing in these woods, miss? I was out picking violets and I got lost. Violets, eh? Hey, fellas, look at these vincas kulalatis. Ain't they pretty? Yes. Oh, they yeah. sure are. Yeah. Now tell me, miss, who are you? My name is Mary and I was captured by the Indians many years ago. Please save me. Now, wait a minute. How do I know you're not a spy? How do I know you've been living among the Indians? I didn't get these beads at Magnum's. <laughs> well, I guess you can come along with us. But I warn you, it'll be dangerous. We're on our way to wipe out the Abernakis. It's a hazardous mission. I don't care. Just so I can get back among my own people. We will protect you. Come on, men. We better push on. Right 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 Gee, those violets are beautiful. May I carry them, miss? That's all those Indians have to see. <laughs> oh, that's right. Come on, men, on our way. And we'll wipe out those Abernathy Indians, or my name ain't... Two days later. Where are we now, Harris? Do you recognize that lake ahead of us? Well, according to my map, that's a finger bowl at the Brown Derby. <laughs> a lot of help you are. Company! I'm afraid to say halt, they'll start again. <laughs> now cut that out! <laughs> you know where we are, miss? Yes, that's Lake Champlain. There are a lot of Indians around here, but they're all friendly. Good. <whistles> Out? <laughs> friendly, eh? Then why is this arrow sticking in me? If you look close, it says, I love you on it. <laughs> oh. Hey, Conkapot, pull this arrow out. Okay. Now, listen, men. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's Lake Champlain. We're headed in the right direction. On the opposite shore lies Fort Wentworth. And tomorrow morning at four o'clock, before the Indians wake up, we'll cross the lake. All right, men, lay down. Unfold blanket. Company, sleep. It is 4 a.m. the following morning, and our little band of rangers is sound asleep, with the exception of Major Rogers, who was already awakened. Company, halt! <laughs> now wake up, men. And no one speak above a whisper. The slightest sound will warn the Indians of our presence. <laughs> Turn off that alarm clock! <laughs> All right, men. On your feet and down to the canoes. Remember not a sound or we're doomed. Gosh, it's dark. It sure is. Not so loud. Four o'clock in the morning, a fine time to get up. Quiet. Now, everybody behind me, single file. Quiet now. Quiet. Whoop! <laughs> Harris, watch your musket. <laughs> All right, men. Here we are. Now get in your canoe. And we'll wipe out those Abernathy Indians, or my name ain't... Or my name ain't... Six months later, and we pick up our brave little band of rangers, footsore and weary, somewhere near Lake Champlain. They have been unable to find the Abernakis or Fort Wentworth, and have been without food for eight weeks. In other words, things is bad. <laughs> Cheer up, men. Cheer up. We must have faith and courage. 
But we're starved, Major, starved. And I've lost half of my men. Well, on you, it looks good. <laughs> Gee, I'm hungry, too. Here, have a bite of my moccasin. Moccasins are no good without ketchup. <laughs> well, men, you've been brave and loyal soldiers. And I'm afraid this is the end. What's that? Tom, Tom, there must be Indians around here. Indians? Raise your muskets, men. Do not be afraid, Major. These Indians are peaceful and friendly. Good. <whistles> Yay! <laughs> Another bullseye. <laughs> I'm getting pretty sick of this. Look, Major, here comes Big Chief and many braves. Oh, yes. All right, men, put down your muskets. I'll talk to these Indians. How? How? We white men. No want fight. We friendly. We friendly, too. No catch em food many moons. Tell me, Chief, which way Fort Wentworth? Fort Wentworth? Yes. I don't know. Hey, Red Brother, which way Fort Wentworth? I don't know. Hey, Thundercloud, which way Fort Wentworth? I don't know. Hey, Geronimo! <laughs> Never mind! Let it go! We'll find it ourselves! Come on, men! Forward! March! We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles G. Mortimer of General Foods, the sponsor of this program, happens to be visiting the coast. So without further ado, we take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where Jack is giving a dinner party in Mr. Mortimer's honor. Here we go. I look at you, and what do I do? I can't speak, I can't sleep, I just sigh. I look at you, and all I can sigh is, My, my! Rochester, we should watch what you're doing. Uh, I want this finished before Mr. Charles G. Mortimer gets here. I'm doing the best I can, boys. Best you can. You started to give me this haircut 40 minutes ago. <laughs> you... You haven't even got the sides done. Well, when I get to Death Valley on top, I'll go faster. <laughs> oh, my, my hair isn't so thin. I may have one little bald spot up there about the size of a quarter. Take a look in this mirror, boss. Inflation is set in. <laughs> Whoop! Rochester, that tickles. What are you doing back there? Your collar's frayed. I'm trimming that, too. <laughs> Never mind the collar. Just shave my neck and get this over with. That's probably Miss Livingston. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Well, what in the world's going on here? Rochester's giving me a haircut. Sit down and read that police gazette. I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Mr. Charles G. Mortimer ought to be here soon. You're certainly putting on the dog for our sponsor. Flowers all over the house, cigars on every table. Well. I can't understand why you're so worried about your option. He'll probably renew it. Mary, I'm not worried about my option. I do as much for any guest. Well, I'll be darned. Look at that picture you got over the fireplace. What about it? It used to be September morn, and now it's Mr. Mortimer. <laughs> now, wait a minute. That picture above my fireplace wasn't September morn. It was Napoleon at Waterloo. Well, he had a gorgeous figure. <laughs> oh, stop. Ooh, Rochester, be careful of that razor. Okay, where's the iodine, boss? Iodine? Did you cut me again? Rochester, did you cut me again? I'll just tighten your necktie. That'll stop it. <laughs> Never mind that. Put a Band-Aid on it. Okay, okay. And hurry up. Gee, I hope Mr. Mortimer will find the house all right. How can he miss it? You've got a welcome mat that covers the whole front lawn. Well, I think the occasion warrants it. There you are. I'm all through. Now, wait a minute, Rochester. Don't cheat. I want some bay rum on my face. Not today, boss. Rochester, do as I tell you. Well, if I use the bay rum, what are we going to have for the cocktails? <laughs> cocktails? Have you been putting bay rum in my cocktails? Boss, rum is rum, no matter what's in front of it. <laughs> well, I don't want those kind of cocktails today. Mary, Mary, how do I look? Let me see. Gee whiz, look how Rochester trimmed her sideburns. 
<laughs> What's the matter with him? You look like Cesar Romero on one side and Waukegan Joe on the other. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, Rochester, take that razor and make them both Waukegan. Okay. Heavens, I, I hope that isn't Mr. Mortimer already. Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. How are you, Mary? Hello, Don. Have a seat, Mr. Wilson. There's nobody ahead of you. Now, cut that out. <laughs> and listen, Rochester, after the party starts, if I catch you running around with your shoe-shining outfit, you're fired. <laughs> but there's a payment due on my yacht. I don't care if there is. The idea of buying a yacht at $2 a week. Well, it'll be 40 years before you own it. 43, I'm putting on a poop deck. <laughs> I don't care what you're putting on. I won't have you annoying my guests. Gee, I wish Don and the rest of the gang would get here. Don's right here. You just said hello to him. Oh, yes. Sit down, Don. I mean, sit down, Don. He is sitting down. Oh, that's right. My goodness, Jack, but you're nervous today. I wouldn't worry about that option if I were you. Who's worried? Mr. Mortimer will sign you up. Don, that's not the reason I invited him over here. Who cares about my job? There are other things besides radio. Sure, with that haircut, you could bring back Waterville. <laughs> Oh, stop with my haircut. Gee, I hope Mr. Mortimer likes the dinner tonight. Oh, he'll like it, Jack. Don't worry. Gee, I wish Don would get here. I'm here, Jack! Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Say, Don, I want to be sure that Mr. Mortimer has a good time tonight. So after the party gets rolling, I wish you'd ask me to do my imitation of a trained seal. People scream whenever I do it at parties, you know? Oh, Jack, you're not going to bore your sponsor with that silly thing, are you? Silly? Why, that's the funniest bit I've done since I used to put a lampshade on my head and pretend I was drunk. <laughs> Remember? Don't you do that trick anymore where you stab yourself with a rubber knife and then pour ketchup on your shirt? No, that kind of stuff is dated. <laughs> I'll do my seal. Now, don't forget, Don, when I say... Pardon me, Mr. Benny. May I see you for a minute? Oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Nichols. This is my new cook, Mary, and a very good one, too. Now, what's on your mind, Mrs. Nichols? I need some butter. Can I have the key for the ice box? <laughs> Of course, of course. Well, that tops everything. A padlock on your icebox. Mary, I have $48 worth of caviar in there. No, oh, no, oh, answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Come on, Mr. Nichols. I'll open the icebox for you. Hello? Yes? Oh, Mr. Mortimer? Mr. Mortimer, give me that phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Mortimer? This is Jack Benny. What? What? What's that? Oh, take it easy. He can hear you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, no. No, Mr. Mortimer. The party is tonight. Well, look, can't you go to the theater tomorrow or the next night? The next night? I've invited the whole gang. They'll be awfully disappointed. What about my butter? Wait, we may not need it. <laughs> well, look, Mr. Mortimer, we're all waiting for you, so do come over. You will? Oh, boy, that's swell. Tell him to come early and get a haircut. Now, come early, Mr. Mortimer, and get married. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Mortimer, see you soon. You're always welcome at the Chateau Benny. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Boy, I was worried there for a minute. What about that butter? Oh, yes. Come on, Mr. Nichols. Gee, I wish Don would get here. Hmm, <laughs> that's all right, Mrs. Nichols. You're doing swell. Gee, this stuff on the stove smells good, eh, Mary? Yeah. Sure is appetizing. What's, uh, what's in this great big kettle over here, Mrs. Nichols? That's my laundry. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. Mary, imagine doing her laundry and preparing dinner at the same time. Well, it's your own fault for getting a cook from Central Casting. <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, come on, Mary. You forgot to lock the icebox. Oh, yes, thanks. And that must be Phil. Answer the door, Rochester! I'm shaving Mr. Wilson! Never mind that. Answer the door. Okay. Now, Mrs. Nichols, I'm leaving the dinner entirely in your hands, so do a good job. You can depend on me, kid. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Come along, Mary. Sure you don't want a shampoo, Mr. Wilson? Rochester, cut out that stuff and set the table. What do you think this is, a barber shop? That ain't the North Pole in the front yard. <laughs> Go out there and take it down. I warned you about that before. 
Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Zeke. Where'd you get the haircut? <laughs> Dennis, I'm certainly surprised at you. Well, gee, you look funny. Oh, I do, eh? And just for that, young man, you're not going to get one bit of caviar tonight. Remember that. Oh, leave the kid alone, Jack. Why do you let Rochester cut your hair in the first place? Because he has nothing else to do. Oh, boss, calm down. <laughs> Oh, you don't work so hard. Instead of standing around here, go out in the kitchen and make a tray of hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres? What, are the, what do you mean? Make a ham sandwich and cut it in 40 pieces. <laughs> now get going. Okay. Barber, butler, chauffeur, gardener, and now I'm an hors d'oeuvre. Guy's always complaining when people are around. Open the door! Open up in there! Well, the maestro is here. Come in! Well, hello, Phil. How are you? Hi, Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Where's the punch bowl? Right over there and take it easy. Hey, what happened to your head? Nothing happened to my head. I just got a haircut. Well, that's one thing a man can't do himself. You ought to get a barber. <laughs> I had a barber, but he didn't have his heart in it. Now, Phil, when our sponsor gets here, I want you to behave yourself and don't start pulling any of those corny cracks of yours. He won't like them. Can I tell the one about the old maid that set the bear trap? No. It's not a bit funny. Besides, it has no point to it. Just keep quiet and we'll all be happy. Now, remember, fellas, I want everybody to be on their best thing. Yipe! That's him now. <laughs> Stand in attention, everybody. I mean, sit down. I mean, answer the door, Rochester. Yes, sir. Now, remember what I told you, fellas. Now, smile, everybody. Pardon me. Does Jack Benny live here? Yes, sir. Ready? One, two... For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, Mr. Charles E. Mortimer. Hey! Hey! Come, come right in, Mr. Mortimer. Come right in. Well, that was quite a reception you gave me. Did you hear that, fellas? That was quite a reception we gave him. You know, you know everybody here, don't you, Mr. Mortimer? Oh, of course, of course. Glad to see you all. How oh, are you? Good to have you with us, Mr. Mortimer. Well, 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 come. Yeah. well, this is great having you with us, Mr. Mortimer. I'm sorry I spoiled your evening at the theater. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I'd much rather be here with you folks. After all, it's important that we get together once in a while. Don't you think? Oh, I think. I mean, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, come, uh, come into the living room, Mr. Mortimer. Thank you. Say, this is a lovely home you have here, Jack. I'm glad you like it. It's nearly paid for, too. <laughs> About another year ought to do it. <laughs> yup. Yes, sir. Yup. Have some, have some punch, Mr. Mortimer. No, thanks. I never drink. That's not going to help any. I'll say. I mean, Mary, please. Jack, I can't get over what a lovely place you have here. Oh, it's simple, but it's homey. Well, I see you have my picture right above the fireplace. Yes, sir. Tomorrow it'll be in it. <laughs> Well, not. You know, Mr. Mortimer, Mary always has to be the comedian. She never lets up. Yeah, she's a clever little girl. Incidentally, Miss Livingston, I want to tell you how much my wife and I enjoy you on the program. Well, thank you, Mr. Mortimer. And I'd like to wish you the best of luck on your presidential campaign. Oh, fine. <laughs> That's... Look, you're thinking of Gracie Allen, aren't you? Oh, yes. I, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Livingston. That's all right. Forget it. Anyone can make a mistake, I always say. Huh, Mary? Shut up. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, Charlie, come on over here and have some punch. Charlie? Thanks, Phil, but I never touch it. It's good stuff, Charlie. This is what you call Virginia punch. One drink and you reel. Ha, 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 ha. That's a lulu. Oh, oh, oh. I, uh... <laughs> I must apologize for Phil, Mr. Mortimer. He's very corny. No, on the contrary. I think Phil has a great sense of humor. Oh, he has. He has. <laughs> and he's so sophisticated. You know, Mr. Mortimer, sometimes that filthy boy just has me in stitches. Yeah, I can imagine. Say, Charlie, did you hear the one about the old maid that put a bear trap under her bed and caught a bear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, Phil, that's a pit. <laughs> Hey, I was hoping you'd tell that one. You know, Mr. Mortimer, he's a riot. He certainly is. Say, Jack. What? If the boss likes that kind of stuff, you've got nothing to worry about. Quiet, Mary. You know, Mr. Mortimer, Dennis, stop standing on your head. Nobody's looking at you. (laughs) 
You know, Mr. Mortimer, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mortimer, you know, one thing about, one thing about this gang, there's no jealousy or friction here. We've been one happy little family for six years. I mean, five years. I was thinking of next year. <laughs> Jack's right, Mr. Mortimer. We do good to have a good time together and really enjoy our work. Well, you always sound like it, too. And, Don, I want to compliment you especially on the way you handle the commercials on our show. Well, thank you, Mr. Mortimer. I realize their importance and how much they mean to our listeners. Oh, I don't know what we do without dear old Don. And now that we're on the subject, Jack... I'd like to tell you how good I think your shows have been this year. Oh, that's very kind of you. Of course, they could have been much funnier. Then why weren't they? (laughs) I mean, I mean... I mean, I mean, I mean, (laughs) Mary. Will you have a cigar, Mr. Mortimer? No, thanks. I never smoke cigars. Well, then take one home for your wife. I mean, I mean... I mean... She doesn't smoke them either. I know she doesn't. I'm a little mixed up. That's all. Well, I'd like to have a cigarette, though. Cigarette, cigarette, cigarette. (laughs) There. There you are, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, Dennis. Yes, please. He's such a polite kid. Uh, Dennis, before we sit down to dinner, how about singing a song for Mr. Mortimer? Oh, there's a party. I don't want to work. Now, Dennis. Oh, Jack, he doesn't have to sing if he doesn't want to. But he wants to. Well, Dennis, what's it going to be? I'm going to sing nya, 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 nya. Dennis! (laughs) If that's not a picture of the same name, you're going to get a good coffee. Now, go ahead. Have you a match, Jack? Match? Match, match, match. Oh, here's a box. Here's a box. I like the cigarette for you. Just a second. Just a second. Stop shaking, for heaven's sake. I'm not shaking. Here you are, Mr. Mortimer. There. Sing, Dennis. Sit right here, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, Don, come here a minute. Yes, Jack. Don't forget to ask me to do my plain seal later. Yeah. Wow. Well, Dennis, that was very good, very good. Didn't you think so, Mr. Mortimer? Yes, that was excellent. I'm really having a grand time here tonight, Jack. Yes, aren't you? You know, Mr. Mortimer, Mr. Mortimer, I've been thinking it's so silly of you to stay at a hotel while you're in town. I have an extra room, and you could just as well stay here at the house with me. Eh, hey, Mary? Why not? He can afford it. <laughs> Mary, I... I wouldn't think of charging Mr. Mortimer, after all. He's my boss, and I hope he will be for a long time. <laughs> now, I think we ought to have a little more entertainment. Eh, Don? Eh, Don? Oh, 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 oh yes. Uh, say, Jack, why don't you give your imitation of a train? A train? <laughs> yes. I do a train seal. Get the ball, Rochester. Uh, that's the top to my ball pole now. Hmm. I won't be able to do my seal act. Oh, well, don't bother about it, Jack. Some other time. Well, I ought to do something to entertain... Uh, excuse me a minute. Of course. You know, Mr. Mortimer, Jack always tries to be a good host and entertain his guests. Yes, I noticed that, but he seems so nervous tonight. Oh, he's always that way. Oh, Mr. Mortimer! Mr. Mortimer, look! How's your party getting along? Yippee! <laughs> well, I'll be darned. He's got the lampshade on. <laughs> How's that, Mr. Mortimer? I was making it off like I was drunk. Oh, uh, was that it? Yeah. Oh, you'd, you'd have got it right away if I'd have staggered. <laughs> I left that out. <laughs> well, here's, here's Mr. Billingsley, our boarder. Good evening, Mr. Billingsley. Ah, uh, good evening, Mr. Benny. Entertaining again, I see. Yes, yes. <laughs> Won't you uh, join us for dinner, Mr. Billingsley? No, thanks. I'm on the wagon. Hey, good night. <laughs> You know, that fellow's quite a character. On him, the lampshade looks good. It does at that. Dinner, sir. There's a lot this time, folks, so don't run. Oh, <laughs> this way, my Mortimer. This way, nothing fancy, just a plain home-cooked meal, that's all. Say, hey, Jack, when are you going to speak to him about your option? Don't bother me now, please. Oh, Mr. Mortimer, the dining room's over here to your left. Yes, I see the boys digging in already. You know, Mr. Mortimer, I have something I want to talk over with you, but I feel that the home is no place to discuss business. I definitely agree with you. Oh. Dead end. (laughs) Well, here we are. You sit right there at the head of the table, Mr. Mortimer. Yes, that's it. 
Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? You set the table beautifully, but this is a special occasion. Where's the hand-painted china? You fired him. I don't mean our old cook. <laughs> oh, do have some caviar, Mr. Mortimer. John, pass him that big bowl of caviar, will you? Surely. Here you are, sir. I thank you, but I never eat it. Oh. Well, take it away, Rochester. Take it away. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I want some of that caviar. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Mortimer finds it offensive. Oh, I don't find it offensive, Jack. I just don't eat it. All right. Take it away, Rochester. <laughs> take it away. What are you going to do? Put it back in the fish? I'm not going to put it back in the fish. I eat hearty, everybody. I hope you like pheasant, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, that's one of my favorite dishes. Good. Gee, it's hot in here. Well, Dennis, take your elbow out of Mary's soup. <laughs> Now, come on, everybody, dig in, eat, drink, and be merry. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Will you pass me the soft treat, Jenny? Yes, sir. Phil, let me have some of that over there, please. Well, I'm glad you're all enjoying the dinner. Pass me the asparagus, Don. Here you are. See, Jack, is everything going to be straightened out about next season? Not yet, Don. This is strictly a social gathering. Well, I'll loosen your belts, everybody. There's still plenty to eat. Will you have some more option, Mr. Mortimer? <laughs> I mean, some more asparagus? <laughs> asparagus, Mr. Mortimer, help yourself. No, thanks, Jack. I have plenty right here. Pretty good food, eh, Morty? Morty. Oh, it's grand, Phil. Really delicious. Well, eat hearty, folks. It's right here for you. Mr. Denny, would you please pass me the mashed potatoes? Why, yes, I'll... Mrs. Nichols! <laughs> I wish you wouldn't sit at the table. Your place is in the kitchen. Well, I'm lonesome, kid. I don't care if you are. Now, get back there. I'll go with her. You sit down. I'm sorry, Mr. Mortimer, but our cook is new here, and I had to straighten her out. My amateur jittery today, Jack. I have never seen you act this way before. Well, I... I haven't been feeling very well. Now, here's the whole thing, Charlie. Jack's worried about... Phil, next... I'll handle it. You just mind your own business. Oh, yes. That reminds me. Uh, say, Jack. Yes, please? I mean, what is it? What is it, Mr. Mortimer? There is something I want to discuss with you as soon as we get through eating. There is? Good eat. I mean, good. Well, first we'll have our dessert... And then we'll go into the other room. Oh, Rochester, bring in the coffee and the apple pie. Okay, boss. Apple pie? What's the matter? Apple pie for dessert? Why, what's the... Oh, my goodness, we forgot yellow! <laughs> we forgot jello! Well, here I go back to the May Company. <laughs> Rochester, you're fired! Get out of this house! What's that? Don Wilson just fainted. Well, get some water, quick! The heck with the water, the heck with everything! I'm gonna kill myself! No, no, wait a minute, Jack, wait a minute. Calm down, it's nothing to worry about. You keep out of this! Oh, pardon me, Mr. Mortimer! <laughs> pardon me, I'm... I'm all excited. No, Jack, take it easy. The whole thing was just an oversight. It could happen to anybody. But I can't understand it, Mr. Mortimer. We always serve America's favorite gelatin dessert in this household. Why, there isn't a day goes by that we don't have some tempting and economical jello in one of its six delicious flavors. And believe me, Mr. Mortimer, I always look for the big red letters on the box. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Jack, because it's nice to know that a fellow as loyal as you will be working for me again next year. Next year? Well, thanks, Mr. Mortimer. But wait a minute. How do you know I'm available? <laughs> well, I'll be... So will I. Play, Phil. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Mary... Wasn't it nice of Mr. Mortimer to sign us up for next season? Yes, why don't you celebrate and put the lampshade on again? <laughs> I think I will. Oh, Mr. Mortimer! Yippee! Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our Master of Ceremonies. A man who had his auction picked up last Sunday and now looks ten years younger, Jack Benny. Phil, 
Thank you, thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, the fact that I'm in good spirits today and look younger has nothing to do with my contract being renewed. I'm always this way. Now, wait a minute, Jack. When our sponsor came to your house for dinner last Sunday, you were a wreck. Who, me? Why, I never saw anyone so jittery and nervous. Me, jittery? Yes, you. Until Mr. Mortimer picked up your option, you made a darn fool of yourself. What are you talking about? All evening long it was, have a cigarette, Mr. Mortimer. Have a cigar, Mr. Mortimer. Here, take this chair, Mr. Mortimer. It's softer. Oh, I didn't make such a fuss over him. Go on, he happened to sneeze once and you sent Rochester out for an oxygen tent. <laughs> Well, I just did that for a gag. What's the matter with you two? And the way you waited on him. You wouldn't let the man do anything for himself. What do you mean? When his shoelace came undone, who tied it? Mary, I happened to be down on the floor at the time. <laughs> That's the only reason I did it. Well, let me ask you something. Why were you laying on the floor in the first place? What? What was that, Phil? I said, why were you laying on the floor in the first place? Phil, you should be the last one in the world to ask anybody why they're laying on the floor at a party. <laughs> why, I... I know bearskin rugs that lead less horizontal lives than you do. <laughs> and incidentally, Phil, you might at least thank me for the good time you had last Sunday. What good time? All we did was play bingo, and our sponsor won every game. Boy, was that oblivious. You mean obvious. <laughs> However, there was nothing obvious about it. Mr. Mortimer is lucky at bingo, that's all. I only called the numbers the way they came up. And the way they came up shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> Oh, forget about it. Frankly, Jack, I, I don't know what the rest of us were playing for. You let Mr. Mortimer bingo every time. All right, so he won the salad bowl. <laughs> but don't forget, he paid 25 cents a card, the same as everybody else. And that salad bowl was a Christmas gift from Eddie Cantor. That's a lie. I got it for my birthday from Olson and Johnson. <laughs> Boy, are they cheap. Just because they're a team, they give one present. <laughs> And incidentally, fellas, it seems funny that you can all criticize and complain. Yet not one of you has the courtesy to mention the delicious food I served. Why, well, you guys all ate like it was your last meal. Well, until he picked up your option, Jackson, we weren't sure. <laughs> Maybe you weren't, Phil, but I wasn't the least bit worried. I knew I was going to be signed up for next season two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Yes, I had definite information. Oh, you and that phony fortune teller. Phony? Mary, there's nothing phony about Madame Zuzu. She clicks like a castanet. <laughs> Why, she's marvelous. Oh, yeah? Four years ago, she told me I was going to marry Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor, she said. All right, so she misses once in a while. <laughs> Why did she have to miss on that one? <laughs> It was just fate, that's all. Even a crystal ball has an off day now and then. Hey, wait a minute. Madam Zuzu? You know, I went to her place once. You did, Phil? Yeah, she told me I was bashful. Ain't that a Lulu? Bashful? You of all people. And she was sitting on my lap at the time. I can't understand <laughs> Me neither. I'd like to take that crystal ball and hit her over the head with it. Mary, will you forget about Robert Taylor? And speaking of Madame Zuzu, fellas, if you knew what she told me about my movie career, you'd all be plenty excited. What did she tell you, Jack? Never mind. You'll read it in the paper next winter. Come on, Jackson, tell us. No, nothing doing. It's a secret. Okay. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Madame Zuzu looked in the crystal, and guess who's going to win the Academy Award next year? Guess who? She ought to be rated. <laughs> All right, just for that, Mary, you're not going with me to the Academy banquet and hear my acceptance speech. Your acceptance speech? Yes, I'm preparing it now. Oh, well, don't write anything that you can't switch to a letter to your father. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. I wouldn't laugh too soon. By the way, Jack, not changing the subject, but uh, while Madame Zuzu was giving you the lowdown on your option, did she mention who's going to be your announcer next season? 
Well, I imagine you're the lucky man, Don, although there wasn't room for you in the crystal. But, uh... <laughs> I'm sure you're set. And we'll have the same little comedian, eh, Mary? Darn it, and I picked out linen and dishes and everything. Mary, will you forget about Robert Taylor? <laughs> anyway, Don... Forget, he says. Mary. <laughs> anyway, Don, it looks like we'll have the same old gang again next year. Madam Zuzu saw all of us together in her crystal ball. She better see a lot more of that green stuff in there. You can count me out. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, I want a raise. I started to work for you four years ago, and I'm still getting the same lousy salary. Well, you got the same lousy band. <laughs> I have a motto, Phil. As ye play, so shall I pay. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What's wrong with my band? What's wrong? Hmm. You've got three violins that no one's ever heard. A guitar A guitar player who got his strings from a yo-yo top <laughs> Two piano players that have to put a nickel in for every number And a brass section that must have a sideline <laughs> And you ask for more money. Well, there's no harm trying. All right, you try. <laughs> Incidentally, Phil, I've got your contract here in my pocket. So right after the broadcast, I want you to put your usual X on the dotted line. I understand? I can print Phil Harris now. I know, I saw it all over the wall. <laughs> Stop showing off. Well, I guess that takes care of our contract problems for next season. You haven't straightened things out with me yet, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Uh, I thought, uh, Dennis, I thought I mailed you a contract to sign. You did, but my mother tore it up. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Dennis. Supposing you and I go in the other room and talk matters over about next season. I guess we can come to an agreement. Well, my mother says... Come along, that... Dennis. Now, Phil... <laughs> Phil, while, uh, Phil, while we're in the other room transacting a deal, how about playing a number? Okay, you great big business man. <laughs> uh, come along, Dennis, my boy. Well, my Come mother... along now. Oh, Phil. What? Play loud so we can't hear Dennis screaming. <laughs> That was Alice Blue Gown, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And very good, Phil. Say, uh, Mary, is Jack in the other room yet? Yes, he's still talking business with Dennis. The kid must be holding out. Yeah, I'm going to open the door and listen. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mary. That isn't ethical. Ethical schmethical. Let's listen in, say. <laughs> I will. Now, Quiet. Sure, Dennis, sure. I know you're worth it, but that's a little too steep. Well, my mother says that next year I ought to get $500 a week. $500, eh? Uh-huh. Well, well, I'll tell you what, Dennis. They're still at it, boys. How's Dennis making out? He's in the neighborhood of 500 but I don't think he'll move in there. <laughs> you know, that Benny's terrific. You know, he's the guy that started the second cup of coffee is free movement. <laughs> yeah, what a character. Well, I think we ought to get going on with the program, uh... See how they're coming along, Mary. Okay. Absolutely, Dennis. I agree with you, but my budget won't permit it. Well, my mother says Look, Dennis, that... look. <laughs> Dennis, would you be satisfied with $250 a week? $250? Oh, sure, that's well. I see. <laughs> hmm. Well, now look, Dennis. You're young yet, and you've got your whole future ahead of you. I'll tell you what I'll do. Well, it's still going on. What's the latest report? Ceiling 500, vision 250. <laughs> it looks bad. Why don't the kid walk out on him? He can't. Jack's sitting on his chest. <laughs> it looks like an all-day session. Now, quiet, everybody. You're right, Dennis. You're absolutely right, but... $85 a week is a lot of money. <laughs> After all, you're just a kid. 
I can't breathe. Move down a little, will you? <laughs> I'm, uh... I'm sorry, Dennis. Now, let's talk this over carefully. I'm sure we can get together. I'll tell you what. Well, that beats everything. What's the figure now, Mary? Eighty-five, and they haven't struck bottom. I never saw a guy as tight as Jack. You remember that Gladys Zabisco he used to go with? Yeah. Well, he broke up with her because she took appetite pills. <laughs> and he was nuts about her, too. Well, here goes for another peek. Quiet now, fellas. Okay, Dennis, it's a deal. Thirty-seven fifty a week. <laughs> Sign right here on the dotted line. What's going on here? <laughs> Dennis, please. Here's the pen. Sign right here. Well, I ought to speak to my mother first. All right. Now, here's what you tell her. It's the last round, and Dennis is on the rope. What was Jack's final offer? Thirty-seven fifty a week. Thirty-seven fifty? Why the kid's getting thirty-seven now? Yeah, but I guess Jack feels he ought to have a raise. <laughs> you know. Well, let's go ahead with the program, fellas. We're all set, eh, Dennis? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, Dennis, what did Jackson offer you for next season? Well, I'm going. Don't to tell get... him, Dennis. Don't tell him. We don't want the others to be jealous of you. Holy smoke! Am I making more money than they are? <laughs> Could be, could be. You know what, Jack? What? You save more money by accident than Harry Lauder does on purpose. Oh, yeah? Well, Mary, I'd be quiet if I were you. Uh, Madam Zuzu looked in the crystal the other day, and you were wrapping up a pair of stockings. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Dennis, now that everything has been smoothed out to our mutual satisfaction... How about singing a nice song for us? Okay. What's it going to be, Dennis? I'm going to sing... Hold it a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bennett. This is Rochester. Oh, it's you. Rochester, if you'd listen to the program, you wouldn't always call up and interrupt in the middle of it. Why don't you tune in once in a while? Well, frankly, boss, you don't do the kind of stuff that intrigues me. <laughs> I know. You won't listen to any program where you don't tear something off, send it in, and get something back. <laughs> now, what do you want? What's on your mind? Well, boys, you know Hollywood Park Racetrack opened last Thursday. Yes. And you know how cheap oats are right now. Oats? What are you driving at? I bought a racehorse. Can I keep him in the garage? <laughs> you bought a racehorse? Rochester, how can you possibly afford to buy a horse on your salary? Well, I paid two dollars down. I got thirty days to raise the other eighteen hundred. <laughs> you mean you have to raise eighteen hundred dollars in thirty days? Yeah, ain't that fantastic? <laughs> it certainly is. How are you going to get that much money in one lump? My back pay would do it. <laughs> Rochester, if you're referring to your investment in the Benny Protective and Endowment Association... <laughs> that doesn't mature until you're 40. I'll be 40 tomorrow. That's a lie. <laughs> now, Rochester, you take that horse back to wherever you got it. There's no room for it in the garage. There is now. I put the Maxwell out in the street for the summer. <laughs> Well, put it right back in again. I don't want my car out in the street. Somebody will come along and steal it. I'd like to get a picture of that. I could sell it to pick, click, or flick. <laughs> Rochester, I'm not going to argue with you. Now, you get rid of that broken down nag. He ain't a broken down nag. He won over a hundred races. Won? All right, run. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, you do as I say. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, boss. What is it now? Uh, I don't like Section 8, Paragraph D of my new contract. What's wrong with it? Section 8 says you get $30 a week. I know, but Paragraph D says a week is 14 days. <laughs> I'm trying out something new. (laughs) 
Anyway, we'll discuss that when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. The idea of buying a racehorse. He'll probably have me out in the morning clocking it. He'll never get up. Well, sing, Dennis. Don't stand there like a dodo. <laughs> racehorse he has to have. Oh, well. That was Where Was I, sung by Dennis Day, who I'm sure will be with us for many years to come. Yes, sir. If I ever get smart, watch out. <laughs> now, Dennis, you say one more thing like that, and I'm going to take you in the next room and give you a good talking to. Boy, will he be flat-chested. <laughs> Never mind. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American playwright, has written another of his famous one-act plays. A hillbilly melodram entitled The Code of the Hills. Or Shoot Me in the Pants, Zeke. The rest is store clothes. <laughs> Set the scene, Mr. Wilson. Gladly. The locale, ladies and gentlemen, is the cabin of the Jake Bennies in a remote section of the Ozarks. The Jake Bennies are in the midst of a feud with their longtime enemies and neighbors, the Fudd Allens. Oh, pardon me, Don. I would like to announce, folks, that any resemblance between the Fudd Allen and our play... And the Fred Allen of radio is purely intentional. <laughs> if he's not a hillbilly, I never saw one. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. It is six o'clock in the evening, and the shooting has been going on all day. Curtain, music. <laughs> Gone away, Pa. Supper's awaiting. Be right there, Mo. A shooting and a killing, a shooting and a killing. When is it gonna stop? We ain't gonna quit till them Allens are wiped out. There ain't room in these yard hills for the both of us. You said it, Pappy. Get away from them doors, Zeb. Say, Pa, what have you and got again the Fudd Allens? I'll tell you what I got again him. One night I asked Fudd how many hairs on a monkey's face. And he said, the next time you shave, count them. <laughs> he knew I couldn't count. <laughs> well, I ain't a-tearing for that kind of city talk, and I ain't forgetting. <laughs> hey, son, barricade that double door. Ooh, Pappy. Son. They got me, Pappy. They got me. What was that, Paul? They uns got our boy, Zeb. Shot him right through the doors. I didn't know he was a-wearing them. <laughs> I'll get them, Allens, for this. Kids don't grow on bushes. No siree. I'm a-going, Pappy. I'm a-getting weaker and weaker. Goodbye, Pappy. Goodbye, Mo. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, what do we got for supper, Ma? Lunch. Good. <laughs> Dish it out. Howdy, Uncle Jake. Hello, thou Twitch. <laughs> hey, Twitch, you shouldn't have been walking around with your left arm shot up like that. Well, I've been a seeking some cord to tie it up with. It keeps a falling off. <laughs> you know, Twitch, I don't like the way that arm of yours keeps the dropping off. It might be ailing. What's that you got under your other arm? My right leg. <laughs> oh. Well, put it in the umbrella stand and come to supper. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> oh, go on. I wish them Allens would hold off till we get through eating. I'm a-going, Pappy. I'm a-going. Take your time, son. <laughs> Pass the coffee, Ma. Hey, Jake, what happened to Cousin Zeb? One of the Allens plugged him. Have some coffee, Twitch. <laughs> oh, go on. Don't those Allens know it's supper time? By the way, Ma, where's our daughter, Linda Lou, Nettie Mae, Lily Bell, Harvest Moon? <laughs> Where is she? She went down to the village to buy a girdle. Had her heart set on it. A girdle? Oh, boy, we can have some hot cake. That griddle! <laughs> What's a girdle, Ma? Something them city gals are wearing. It's like a sweater, only it snaps at you. <laughs> By gum, what'll he be thinking up next? 
Here she is now. Hello, Lindy Lou, Nettie Mae, Lily Bell, Harvest Moon. Hello, Pappy. Hello, Ma. Hello, Lindy Lou, Nettie Bell. I mean, Lily Mae. I mean, Nettie Mae. Oh, nuts. Hello. <laughs> we ends have been a worrying about you, gal. You shouldn't be out of doors at a time like this. Why not? Them Allens couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. No, but they could hit yours. <laughs> Sit down, gal. Say, Uncle Jake. What is it, Tweet? Look out the window. Ain't that one of them Allen sneaking up on us? Either that or a polecat. Give him a rifle, Ma. Watch out, Pa. Watch out. <laughs> he missed me. Oh, yeah? Where's your ear? Dog gone, and I wanted to hear the pitch bandwagon. Come on, Tweet. Grab a gun. That'll teach them vomit. I was saying that we would stop this darn feud. Not Foot Allen. He's a feuding this man in these hills. I wonder what makes him so feudy. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Ma, pass me the sugar. Oh, go on, then. Pick up that spoon, Ma. Never mind, I'll get you another one. I want that one. My hand's on it. <laughs> Thanks. A shooting and a killing, a shooting and a killing. How many more pages to this play? Can't be many. Here comes Porky Wilson now. Hello, Porky. Hello, Jake. Say, what happened to Zeb? Them Allens done plugged him. And none of us ain't safe till this feud is over. I am. I'm so big they're scared to shoot at me. Why, them Allens is as yellow as, uh, as, uh, as, uh... Banana. Well, that's all for tonight, folks. Will the Jake Bennys win the feud? Will the Fudd Allens be wiped out? Will Porky Wilson recover? I don't know. Hey, Clem, will Porky Wilson recover? I don't know. Hey, Zeke, will Porky Wilson recover? I don't know. Hey, say! Let it go! It's not important! My goodness! Play, Phil! This, this is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that uh, next week marks our final appearance on the air for this season. So tonight, we bring you our master of ceremonies who has one more Sunday to greet you. That's right, Don. One more broadcast. Yes, sir. And one more paycheck. Yikes! <laughs> Jack Benny. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, here we are coming to the close of another season. Gosh, the months sure fly by, don't they? Yes, they do, Jack. They certainly do. You know, it doesn't seem possible that vacation time is so near. Just think, a couple of more weeks and I'll be on a boat bound for good old Honolulu. Honolulu, eh? Oh, that ought to be a grand trip. Have you ever been there before, Jack? Uh, yes, Don, about ten years ago, but the grass skirts were much longer then. <laughs> I'll probably never recognize the old place. <laughs> See, I can hardly wait to get on that beach at Waikiki. Oh, uh, it must be gorgeous with that tropical scenery and everything. And I understand they have a couple of very lovely hotels right there on the ocean. That's right, the Royal Hawaiian and the Moana. And let me tell you something, Don. Those two hotels are tops. They're the last word in luxury. So I hear. Which one are you stopping at, Jack? And uh, neither. <laughs> You see, uh, I've already made reservations at the Sweet Leilani Auto Court. <laughs> it's a brand new, and it's just a short walk to the bus that takes you to the beach. It, <laughs> oh, it should be swell there. Huh? The Sweet Leilani Auto Court? Jack, now you only take a vacation once a year. Why don't you live at the Royal Hawaiian? Well, I want to relax, Don. I want a place where I don't have to dress for dinner every night. But, Jack, the Royal Hawaiian is a perfect place for relaxation. You don't have to dress for dinner unless you want to. Oh. Well, Don, you see, the Sweet Leilani is American plan. That's the way I like to live when I travel. No fuss or inconvenience. But, Jack, the Royal Hawaiian is American plan, too. Oh. <laughs> Well, Don, as long as I'm going for a rest, I want a place that's small and intimate. But, Jack... Oh. (laughs) 
Now, forget it, Don. My mind's made up. Well, it's your vacation, so I guess you can live where you want to. By the way, uh, what are the rates at the Sweet Lilani? It's eight dollars a day for the regular tourists and five for us beach boys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can't beat it, huh? Say, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Well, say, Jack, if you're going to Honolulu, you ought to buy a new bathing suit. Why? What's wrong with the bathing suit I have now? Well, for one thing, it's got long pants. <laughs> Mary, my trunks only go to the knees. Not when they're wet. Never mind. <laughs> Don't make things up. Well, Jack, if Mary's talking about that suit you wear around your swimming pool, it is a little old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? Yeah, you ought to rip that Coney Island off the back. <laughs> You're in the West now. Mary, I like that suit, and it's not old-fashioned. I got it only a year ago in my father's store in Waukegan. Well, it must have been under something that wasn't selling. <laughs> I'd like to see something in that store that Dad couldn't get rid of. You know, my father has a slogan. If it don't sell in a year, I'll wrap it up and we'll dicker later. <laughs> He's some salesman. I know. When we were in Waukegan last June, he told me I had a figure like Dorothy Lamour. Oh, he was kidding, Don. He was not. He sold me a sarong. <laughs> there you are. That's Dad for you. You think that's something? He sold me a sailor suit. A sailor suit? If I don't find a sailor, it's a total loss. <laughs> well, that's rich. So Dad finally got rid of it, eh? Say, Mary, come to think of it, I'd like to borrow that outfit. I can wear it on the boat to Honolulu. Are you going by boat? I thought you were going to swim. <laughs> now cut that out. <laughs> I'm going on the Luraline, and it's a great big ocean liner. Oh, you know, Jack, I envy you that trip to Honolulu. Are you going to stay there all summer? I'd like to, Don, but I have to be back by the end of July to start my new picture. Oh, that's right. That's the one you're going to make with Fred Allen, isn't it? That's what Paramount thought, but I straightened that out. I spoke to Mark Sanders, the director, and Mr. Allen has been eliminated from the cast. In the first place, how would he ever photograph that face of his? What's the matter with his face? I could talk for an hour on that. <laughs> Why, do you know, Don, when we were in New York last month, the bags under Alan's eyes looked at Phil Harris's and said, My son, my son. <laughs> anyway, I put my foot down and Mr. Allen will not appear in my vehicle. Well, that's news to me. Say, Jack, who's going to be your leading lady? Only lovely, beautiful Mary Martin. That's all. Mary Martin? Well, isn't that the girl that used to sing My Heart Belongs to Daddy? Yep, that's her. Is she going to sing it in your picture? I don't know. It's a kind of an old song. Well, you're an old daddy revival. <laughs> Mary, just let me worry about my picture and everything will be all right. Oh, hello, Philzy. Hiya, Jackson. I hear you're getting ready for that big vacation in a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. Where are you going this summer, Phil? Oh, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. Why don't you go to Honolulu and see Jack's bathing suit? Oh, quiet. <laughs> have, uh, have you ever been to Honolulu, Phil? No, but I sure wish I could go. Oh, boy, how I'd like to sit on the beach in the moonlight with a couple of those cute little papayas in my arms. <laughs> Cute little what? Papayas, you know, girls, dames. Papayas? Sure, don't you speak Honolulian? <laughs> Honolulian? Phil, in the Hawaiian language, a papaya is a melon. A girl is called Awani. Oh, Jack, you're wrong about that. Awani is the name of the hotel we stopped at in Yosemite. Oh, oh, yes. yes. A Hawaiian girl is a wahini. Oh, that's right. That's the word. So you see, Phil, what you really mean is you'd like to be on the beach in the moonlight with a couple of wahini. Let it go. I'll get some local stuff. <laughs> that's the idea, Phil, and I know your technique. You drive down the boulevard in that flashy car of yours and da, 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 can I give you a lift, honey? <laughs> That's you. By the way, does your guitar player still sit in the rumble seat with a lasso? <laughs> does he? Now, wait a minute. Don't mention that dumbbell. He wrote the cop yesterday. <laughs> Wrote the cop? Yeah, what a nitwit. I told him a million times. Anything in blue, lay off. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, he's nearsighted, eh? Yeah. I should have known that. He hasn't hit the strings on his guitar in eight weeks. <laughs> well, Phil, so much for your private life. And now, inasmuch as there are millions of people listening in that are just dying to hear one of your numbers, how about playing something? I'll be only too happy to acquiesce. <laughs> oh, my goodness, he got it right. Play, Junior, and go to the head of the class. I ought to get more dough for them big words. Hit it, boys. <laughs> uh, that was uh, Your Guess is as Good as Mine, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Oh, say, Phil, before I forget it, uh, when I leave for Honolulu the week after next, I wish you'd bring your entire band down to the boat and play a loa for me. You know, give me a real send-off. Well, that a loa's a pretty tricky number. I don't know if we'll have time to learn it. <laughs> All right, play Tiger Rag, but be at the boat. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, Don. Yes, Derek. I want you down there to cheer and wave and holler Bon Voyage to me. And Mary... Mary, you bring a lot of confetti and throw it at me. You understand? Yeah. What about Dennis A? What's he going to do? I got him down for a basket of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an apple and a banana and three or four bottles of champagne. And this is very important. I want all of you to be there early. Well, come to think about it, Jack, I may not be able to make it. You be there, Don. I want everybody on that boat to know how much my gang thinks of me. I'll bring an onion so I can cry. <laughs> it won't be necessary. Now, look, fellas, I want you to remember one thing. On the dock before I leave, I want you all to cheer and be happy. But as the boat is pulling out, I want those cheers to gradually taper off as you realize that you won't see me again for four weeks. So your mood suddenly changes from gaiety to sadness. Do you get it? Yeah, what time is rehearsal? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no rehearsal. I want it to be sincere. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we leave the beautiful Hawaiian Islands and went our way back across the broad Pacific to Sunset and Vine. Ah, what a trip. Say, Jackson, I just have to think of something. Oh, fine. What is it? If you're going to take a vacation this summer, how are you going to make that picture with Fred Allen? Phil, I explained that before you came in. I'm not starting that picture before the end of July, and Mr. Allen is not going to be in it. I had him scuttled. <laughs> well, I heard his program Wednesday night, and he said... I don't care right what he said. And incidentally, Phil, you know my rule. That'll cost you $5 for listening to Allen's broadcast. <laughs> you want to pay me now, or shall I deduct it? You wouldn't dare dock me, brother. I wouldn't, eh? Well, if your paycheck isn't $5 light this week, may I be under the shower when the pot of gold calls. <laughs> Take your fine like a man. Fine, fines, rules, rules. I never saw a guy like you. Well, what's your complaint? Five dollars fine if you listen to Alan's program. Two dollars fine if we're late for our show. Well? I got one more laugh than you did last Sunday, and you docked me seven fifty. Well, you got that big laugh at my expense. When I happen to mention that my fortune teller, Madam Zuzu, predicted that I'd win the Academy Award next year, you said she ought to be rated. Nice talk. Well, they closed her up, didn't they? <laughs> That's just a coincidence. Madam Zuzu is no phony. Well, if she's so good, why didn't she look in her crystal ball and see the police coming? Phil, go down to the clink and ask her. <laughs> Don't bother me. And another thing, Harris, for trying to corner me, it's going to cost you another $5. So hand it over. I think that's awful. Don't you, Phil? Well, I don't mind paying the fine so much, but I hate to see all that dough go out of circulation. <laughs> oh. So now you're getting wise, eh? Trying to be comical, eh? Well, listen, stupid. Yes, please? <laughs> oh, hello, Dennis. Well, you're, uh... You're a little late tonight, aren't you? I'll have to order you. I'm broke. <laughs> It's all right, Dennis. Forget it. You're a nice kid, and I won't take advantage of you. I'll tell you what you can do, though. When I sail for Honolulu, you can bring me a big basket of fruit. A basket of fruit? Yes. After all, you can't come down to the boat empty-handed. Why not? Read your contract. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. If Dennis thinks the world of me and wants to bring me a big basket of fruit with a couple of bottles of champagne in it, that's his business. Champagne? What's going on here? <laughs> oh, 
All right, Dennis, settle down. And now that you're here, may we have our usual delightful tenor solo? Sure, but isn't Mr. Harris going to play a band number first? Dennis, if you'd have been here on time, you'd realize that Mr. Harris and his boys have already barbecued a selection. <laughs> so now it's your turn. Okay. Sing, Dennis. Gee, champagne. Dennis. I was better off when I was jerking sodas. <laughs> Dennis, sing. For all I've done for that kid, he begrudges me a bottle of champagne. <laughs> Say it all over again. That was, um... Say It, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that's a beautiful number. Really lovely. By the way, that's from some picture, isn't it? Yeah, that's from Buck Benny Rides Again. Oh, oh, it is. Oh. Well, well, it's a grand song. I was Dennis sing Playmates, but you made me change it. <laughs> and now, um... And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight... Remember, we were out in the lobby and you told me... Dennis! <laughs> and tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction... Scram, kid. Uh, for our feature attraction... The uh, Benny Jokes Like Mother Used to Make Players will present their version of the Los Angeles Telephone Directory. A murder mystery entitled Number, Please, or It Wasn't the Switchboard That Was Plugged. <laughs> now, in this, uh, in this thrilling drama, I will play the part of Oxford 7071, who is madly in love with Hollywood 2734. So she leaves her husband, West Los Angeles 33022, Jr. But, but her husband doesn't mind because he's secretly in love with a blonde Burbank unlisted number. <laughs> Catch on? Now, in this drama... Oh, who can that be? Hey, 3500, open up! Well, it's Andy Devine. Come on in, Andy! <laughs> Andy. Hi, you both. Well, 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 it's nice to see you again, Andy. Hey, you don't get into Hollywood as often as you used to. Well, it's getting too city-fied, Buck. When I drive down Vine Street in my horse and buggy, everybody stares at me. Oh, still driving the old nag, eh? <laughs> Can you imagine that, Mary? Andy drives into town with a horse and buggy. He ought to be up to date and get a Maxwell, eh, 40? <laughs> Eight forty, eight forty. See, you're cute tonight. I am another thing. <laughs> Always goes. <laughs> And another thing, Buck, what? when they built this NBC studio, they forgot to put a hitching post out in front. There ain't no place to time a horse. Well, just hitch it to a song plugger. There are plenty of them the rock. Say, Andy, Andy, how did you happen to drop in today, anyway? Well, Buck, you only got one more broadcast to do, so I come over to see if I could handle the summer show. The summer show? Well, Andy, what could you do with this program? Well, I could take your place as MC. Uh huh. My hired man could be Don Wilson, and Ma could be Mary. Well, who could you get to be Phil Harris? Pa, he'll drink anything. <laughs> oh well, that'll help. Of course, your pa don't look like Phil. Well, we could curl his hair if we can get the booze out of it. <laughs> I know, Andy, but can he handle the job? I mean, does he know anything about music? Not a thing, Buck. That cinches it. <laughs> yep, he's your man. Why do I do it? Why do I stand for all these insults? Because you can't get a job anywhere else. Now go sit down. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Andy, I'd love to give you and your folks a chance at this program, but everything is pretty well set. You see, the Aldridge family has taken over the show for the summer. Are they are? Yep. And no chance for the Divine family, huh? No, I'm sorry, Andy. Well, I better run home and tell Paul before he takes that bath. <laughs> yes, I would. Well, so long, Andy. Uh, so long, Buck. Oh, by the way, there's an old friend of yours in town. Did you see him? An old friend? Who? Fred Allen. 
Fred Allen? Fred Allen's in town? Hey, sure. I just saw him go into the Brown Derby. Oh, it must have been Bull, Montana. <laughs> It couldn't have been Alan. Well, Jack, that's what we've been trying to tell you. It's been in all the papers. Do you mean that... Certainly. Alan's out here to make that picture with you, and he's going to be in it whether you like it or not. Oh, he is, eh? Mary, get me Mark Sandrich on the phone. It's Hollywood 2411. Okay. I'll straighten this thing out in a hurry. Well, so long, Buck. Uh, I hope I didn't start any trouble. Don't worry, Andy. I'll handle it. So long. Alan, I'm going to have that guy kicked right out of California. Oh, Jack, stop acting like a kid. Is it going to kill you to make a picture with Alan? Don, that's a fate worse than death. <laughs> Believe me. Be reasonable, Jackson. The guy came all the way out here. What's he going to do all summer? Let him get a tan over that jaundice of his. What do I care? In the first place, he has no... Hello? Mr. Mark Sandridge, please. I'd like to make a picture just once where I don't have to go through a lot of aggravation. Hello, Mr. Sandridge. Jack Benny is calling. No, Jack Benny. Benny. Spell it for him. <laughs> it begins with a B. B E N. Give me that phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Sandwich. This is Jack Benny, the star of Man About Town, and Buck Benny Rides Again. Why don't you mention some of those stinkers you made? <laughs> Never mind. Now, look, Mr. Sandridge, I thought I made it clear that I will not make a picture with Fred Allen. I don't care if he has got a contract, tear it up. No, his. <laughs> but look, Mr. Sandridge, the guy has no class. He's a low comedian. I can't afford to be in a picture with him. Tell him you'll quit. I quit. Marry. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Sandridge, if you think I'm going to... But... I know, but... I know, but... I know, but... Say, Don, are you going home right after the broadcast? Yes, I was planning to. Why? I know, but... Well, I was wondering if you'd give me a lift. you go right by my house. I'll be glad to, Mary. I know, but... <laughs> but... Say, Dennis, you coming over to the Wilshire Bowl tonight? Well, I was going to, Mr. Harris, but I haven't got a date. Come over anyway, kid. I'll get a cute girl for you. I know, but... <laughs> get one for me, too, Phil. <laughs> I know, but... Well, look, Mr. Sandwich, we might as well get this straightened out right now. I am not going to make a picture with Fred Allen. You can't team a horse with a jackass. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Just say that again. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Is that so? You got your encore. Hang up. <laughs> well, we'll talk this over later, Mr. Sandwich. Goodbye. Well, that's that. Well, there's just one more thing to settle. Say, Don, where did Andy say he saw Fred Allen? Going into the Brown Derby. Oh, the Brown Derby, eh? Well, as soon as we're through, I'm going to stroll over there and give that wise guy a good talking to. Say, Phil. What? Come along with me and bring your boys. I'll treat them to a sandwich. <laughs> you come too, Mary. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Good night, folks. One cherry phosphate. One cherry phosphate. Hey, buddy, I've got a broadcast to do in a few minutes. Will you please hurry with my sandwich? Why don't you eat after the broadcast? Because I'm hungry now. Get the sandwich. Okay, Mr. Benny. What kind was that again? A tuna fish and peanut butter on rye bread. <laughs> oh, yes, with an egg in it. The egg goes in my malted milk. Now hurry, please. Oh, hello, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Think I'll have time for a bite to eat before our broadcast? Yes, if we can get a little service here. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> well, there goes my new straw hat. <laughs> That did it. Oh, that's too bad, Jack. I didn't see it. Is it crushed? Like a pansy in a dictionary. Is <laughs> I had crushed. Well, I'm so sorry, Jack. I, I think I ought to pay for it. How much did it cost? No, no. Forget about it, Don. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> Just think. A few more minutes and we'll be doing our last. Just... 
Just mail me a check. Hiya, Mr. Wilson. What'll it be? I'll have a club sandwich, please. Okay. One clubby for clubby. Cover up. <laughs> and hurry mine while you're at it. Hi, Jack. Hello, Don. Well, hello, Mary. Hello. What are you eating, Jack? Oh, my regular. Tuna fish and peanut butter. What a man. Just because they name a sandwich after you, you eat it every time you come in here. Well, why shouldn't I? The Jack Benny three-decker delight is very helpful. I always eat things that are full of vitamins. Then why don't they show? Oh, quiet. <laughs> There's a club sandwich, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. What's yours, Miss Livingston? I have a pineapple nut sundae with cherries and lots of whipped cream. My goodness, Mary. Why don't you eat something with vitamins? Okay, put some tuna fish on it. <laughs> Mary, you better save all those cute remarks for the program. And incidentally, young lady, as long as this is our farewell appearance, I wish you'd be a little more careful what you say. You mean I shouldn't tell them what happened at Paramount yesterday? <laughs> Don't you dare. What happened, Mary? Never mind. See? You're starting already. Go on, Mary. What was it? Yeah, what happened? You stay out of it. <laughs> And get my sandwich. <laughs> well, Don. <laughs> oh. It seems that Paramount gave Fred Allen Dorothy Lamour's old dressing room, which is right next to Jack. Only Jack didn't know that Fred was in there. Only Jack didn't know. Only Jack didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jack knocked on the door and yelled, Hello, Dorothy. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Very amusing. <laughs> and what happened, Mary? Fred yelled back, Don't come in. I haven't got my sarong on. <laughs> Yes, but he didn't fool me for a minute. But Jack, I thought you told Mark Sandridge, the director, that you wouldn't make a picture with Alan. Well, we compromised, Don. Alan can be in the picture, but he has to be the straight man. He gives me all the leads, and I give all the answers. Well, that'll be a novelty. The question's getting the laugh. <laughs> I'll get the laugh. Don't worry. There's your pineapple sundae, Miss Livingston. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. She just got here. Where's my three-decker? Bill's putting a poop deck on it. <laughs> Don't get fancy. Just bring it in. <laughs> Hiya, kids. You better step on it. We'll be on the air in a few minutes. Oh, hello, hello Phil. Phil. Hi. Hello, Don. Well, look who's on time tonight. What's the matter, Phil? Does your conscience bother you because this is our farewell program? Holy smoke. Is this our last broadcast? I better start saving my dough. <laughs> yes, Maestro. You have about 30 minutes left to get an annuity. <laughs> so make it snappy. What it be, Twitch? Hiya, bub. Just give me a glass of water. Glass of water? Okay. Put some bromo in it. I thought so. <laughs> a bromo seltzer, eh? One Phil Harris special. Coming up. <laughs> they know you like a book, eh, Phil? Hey, son. Hey. Are you Jack Benny from the radio? That's me. My program goes on just a few minutes. Yeah, I heard it last week. Oh, you did? But I didn't like it. <laughs> That's uh, too bad. You know, I can't please everybody. Yeah, especially me. Well, uh, so long. I'll be listening to you, me. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm going to worry whether, whether he likes me or not. Here's your sandwich, Mr. Benny. Well, it's about time. Give me that mall of milk, too. Okay. Boy, am I hungry. Say, uh, Jack, I better run along upstairs. I'll see you in the studio. All right, Don. Well, I'll be darned. Hey, buddy, I ordered a tuna fish and peanut butter. Well, what's the matter? This is tuna fish and peanut brittle. <laughs> a fine combination. Well, we're all out of peanut butter. It's a nice time to tell me. Bring me something else, then. Bring me a turkey sandwich. Okay. One turkey for jerky. Come on! <laughs> Now, see here, young man, I'm a very good customer, and if you think that I'm... Hey, mister, is this seat taken? No, sit right down. Hey, Jack, it's getting late. we better get out of here. Yeah, come on, Jackson. We'll be late for the broadcast. Oh, I think I got time to eat a sandwich. Pardon me, mister, what time is it? The time? Yes. I don't know. Hey, Eddie, what time is it? I don't know. Hey, Bill, what time is it? I don't know. Hey, Bill! Hey! Never mind, I'll eat after the program. <laughs> come on, Mary, hurry up, Phil. <laughs> Thank you.
The Jello Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is only fitting that on this, our last program of the season, I could pay tribute to the man who has guided us through the past 36 weeks. Oh, don't bother, Don. <laughs> A man whose spirit and leadership has made this program what it is today. Oh, anybody could have done it. Maybe. <laughs> Continue, Don. A man whose brilliant and sparkling personality has been reflected into each and every one of us. I have so much of it. <laughs> Go ahead. A man whose age and experience have proven invaluable to us younger members of the cast. That one he could have left out. <laughs> oh, well. So here he is, folks. The old Mother Hubbard of the Jell-O program, Jack Betty. <laughs> Uh, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. Hmm, old Mother Hubbard, that's a fine introduction on Father's Day. <laughs> Don, as long as you started out so beautifully, why didn't you finish with something sentimental like, uh, here he is, folks, the genial skipper of the good ship Jell-O, Jack Benny. Now, that would have been swell. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, that sounds a bit too corny. Oh. Well, now that you mention it, it does sound a little like one of Phil Harris's mental nuggets. <laughs> There you go again. Oh, boy, am I glad this is the last broadcast. Yeah? Yeah. Next week, I'll be out on the road playing those one-night stands where people appreciate me. Phil, you stay in a town longer than one night and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, you start on the road next week, eh? What's your itinerary? Plain suits for the boys and a sport outfit for me. <laughs> Well, that was my fault. <laughs> Phil, an itinerary means your route. What town's you gonna play? Oh, well, why don't you come right out and ask me instead of ringing in them new words? <laughs> new words. Phil, the word itinerary is very common. I learned what it meant when I was in the third grade. You learned to shave there, too, didn't you? <laughs> Mary, I wasn't in third grade that long. Go on, they had to give you election day off so you could vote. <laughs> All right, go ahead, keep it up. I suppose I had rheumatism when I was in the third grade. You spent your lunch money on liniment, if that's what you mean. Now, put that up! <laughs> you never stop, do you? Ah. Mary, if I'm a big dodo like you try to make me out, how come I'm the star of this program? Because you're a great comedian, you have a marvelous personality, and you know show business from A to Z. No, thanks. It's more like it. Say, Phil. Oh, brother. <laughs> now, don't spoil it. Say, Phil, as I started to ask you before I was sent back to third grade, uh, what's your route? What, what town are you going to play? Well, tomorrow night we open in San Bernardino, then we go to Santa Barbara, uh -huh. then Long Beach, then San Diego. I see. Then the following night we go to Fall River, Massachusetts. <laughs> Fall River, Massachusetts? How are you going to get there in one night from San Diego? I don't know. Is it much of a drive? <laughs> you hear that, fellas? What a schedule. That'll be a fine vacation touring the country with those 18 downbeat derelicts. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Don, uh, what are you uh, planning to do on your vacation? Take a trip somewhere? Well, Jack, this may come as a sort of a surprise to you, but... Uh, I'm going to make a picture for Harry Sherman at Paramount. It's a western. Oh, well, I'll be done. So you're going to make a western, eh? Are you going to ride a horse, Don? Yes, sir. And you ought to see that animal. It's a beauty. So is Jack Straw Hacker. You sat on it. <laughs> yeah, 450. Well, tell me about your picture, Don. Uh, is it an interesting story? Oh, very. You see, I'm Sheriff Slim of Rattlesnake Gulf, and there's a mob of outlaws that come in town one night to rob the bank. Rob the bank, eh? Yeah. Well, it sounds like a fascinating story, and I wish you luck, Don. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from Buck Wilson rides again to our vocal interlude, uh, Dennis Day, our young tenor, will offer... Uh, Dennis isn't here yet. He isn't? I think he'd be on time for our last program. Look, Jack, there he is, sitting out in the audience with his mother. Where? See that lady with the little boy on her lap? <laughs> Well, I'll be done. Hey, Dennis, what are you doing out there? I'm watching the program. Well, get up here, Your Honor. Okay. Come on, Ma. Hmm. 
would have to bring his mother with him. Oh, Jack, it's our last show. What do you care? She's always got a chip on her shoulder. The old... Oh, good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Day. Good evening, Mr. Benny. I'm so happy to see you. Well, you certainly don't look it. You see? You see what I mean? You see? There. Oh. You know, Mrs. Day, I don't like to say this, but since you've stayed away from the program, Dennis and I have been getting along fine, and he's improved tremendously. He's got more volume to his voice, more assurance, and more poise. Then why don't you give him more money? <laughs> because he's young yet. That's why. Shirley Temple made a million dollars before she was ten years old. Shirley Temple? Yes. Well, hang some curls on your brat and we'll dick her. <laughs> now, look, Mrs. Day, give me a little credit. I've developed your son into being a first-class comedian. Then he ought to have more jokes to tell. Oh, now you want jokes for him. Well, for your information, Mrs. Day, there are just so many jokes in our script. And when this pack of wolves come in here Sunday night, your lamb is lucky if he gets to sing. <laughs> and now, Dennis, how about a song? Okay. Here, Mr. Benny, you're not a bit afraid of my mother, are you? Your mother? No. The woman don't live that you're afraid of, eh, Tiger? Mary, I don't like those nicknames. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Mrs. Day, will you please take your seat in the audience? <laughs> That was Blue Lovebird from Lillian Russell, sung by Dennis Day. A great song from a great picture. By the way, Dennis, did you see the picture? Yeah. And I was wondering, Mr. Benny, do you think Alice Day on the screen was as beautiful as the real Lillian Russell? So they say. Of course, I never knew Lillian Russell. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mary, I'm warning you. I suppose I knew Diamond Jim Brady, too. If you did, you didn't get any on you. <laughs> Mary, I was just about to make an announcement concerning our cast next year, and a certain clever kiddo may be cut out. Now, sit down. Yes, Mr. Benny. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Benny. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude this final broadcast, I would like to announce that on Sunday, October the 6th, Mary, go away, we will return to the air for the same sponsor at the same time and with the same cast. Mary, Phil, Don, Dennis, Andy, and Rochester, who is now touring in vaudeville. Incidentally, Jack, who's taking over our summer show? Has it been settled yet? Uh, yes, Don, the Aldrich family is going to move in for three months. As a matter of fact, young Henry Aldrich is dropping in here in just a little while. I want you all to be very nice to him. He'll probably be scared stiff in front of a microphone. Huh? Scared in front of a microphone? Why, Henry Aldrich is a veteran in radio. Why, he can't be. He's just a kid. Sure, but he's had his own program for the past two years. <laughs> Gee, he's funny. Funny? Does he, uh... Does he do comedy? Haven't you heard about him, Jackson? Why, that kid's a riot. He's terrific. He is? And he's young, eh? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and you want to watch out for that boy. Remember the old saying, make way for tomorrow. Well, if he thinks he's coming out here to steal my... Oh, I'm not worried. <laughs> but then, what's my sponsor thinking of putting another comedian in my place? Now, take it easy, Jack. The boy won't hurt you. He's only taking your place for three months. Oh, that's right. A lot can happen in three months. What do you mean? Well, suppose at the end of the summer, Henry Aldridge goes to our sponsor and says, Look, I did all right on the summer show. Why make a change? What? Why not keep the Aldridge family? But... Why let go of a good thing? Yeah, what do you need with Benny? Why the little double crosser? <laughs> I'll punch that Aldridge kid right in the nose. Now, Jack, don't get excited. The kid doesn't mean any harm. Then why is he trying to put me out of work? Especially at my age. <laughs> Ooh, my back. All of a sudden, you're old and feeble. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, fellas, that's the way they want it, all right. Heaven knows I try to entertain the American public. <laughs> what? That's life, I guess. Life. Jack, what are you talking about? You'll be back on this program next October. Don't try to soften the blow, Tom. I can see the handwriting on the wall. Thank heaven I've saved a few pennies. 
You guys, have you got that fortune in pennies? <laughs> no time for jokes, Mary. And I think that a little squirt like that Aldrich kid can come along and come in and take away all that I've built up through years of constant... Come in, come in. Well? Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm Henry Aldrich. Oh, you are, eh? Got a nice hand there, didn't he? Yeah, that's a public for you. Fickle. <laughs> a little while ago, they were doing that for me. Well, young man, you can very nicely get right out of this studio. Get out of this studio? Why, our sponsor sent me. I don't care what our sponsor did. You don't start working on this program until next week, so scram. Yeah, but I flew all the way here from New York just to be on your show tonight. I don't care if you did. Get out. For Mr. Bunny. Nothing. Get out before I throw you out. What's going on here? <laughs> You know what's going on. Teach you to take my job away. Look at him standing there. It's so darn funny, Aldrich. Why don't you go ahead and tell a joke? Go ahead. Make me laugh. Gee whiz, Mr. Benny. I can't understand all this. I came all the way from New York to be with you tonight. Who cares? I'm bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody told me you were such a nice fellow. I heard a little bit about you too, buddy. Now, please get out of here. Oh, Jack, you have to fall for everything. We were only kidding you. Why, of course. You don't have to worry, Jack. It's just a rib. Rib nothing. I can look right at that boy and see he's got talent. <laughs> Can't pull the wool over my eyes. Hair either. Quiet. <laughs> worried enough. Oh, wake up, Jackson. This kid isn't trying to take your job. But my goodness, Mr. Benny, I, I, I think you're the greatest comedian in the world. You're my ideal. I am, eh? Honest. Why, well, I'd rather go without supper than miss you on Sunday night. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well. Well, I always listen. Why, I know all of your stuff by heart. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> Put up your tube. Grab him, grab him. Jack, what's the matter with you? Calm down. Calm down? You just heard him admit he was stealing my stuff. Oh, no. You misunderstand me, Mr. Benny. All I meant was that you're so funny that I can't help but remember everything you do. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry I made that pass it. <laughs> So you uh, think I'm pretty funny, eh, kid? Yes, sir. I think Phil Harris is very amusing, too. Oh, you do, eh? But when it comes to class, you got him beat a mile. Well, Henry, I'll have to admit that Phil is a little corny. Oh, you're both corny, but you have more finesse. <laughs> now, look, Henry. See what I told you? The kid's a panic. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, Henry, there are a couple of rather personal things I want to talk to you about. I'll tell you what. Let you and I run down to the drugstore. I want a sandwich anyway. I'll talk to you there. Okay. Well, so long, everybody. So long, Henry. So long. Good luck so on your summer show. Gee, thanks. Goodbye, Mary. Give me a kiss. Kiss, Henry. So long. <laughs> I'll see you later. Come along, Henry. Okay, Mr. Benny. Well, Henry, now, here's, here's what I want to talk to you about. You see, I do a comedy show nine months out of the year. Now, you're coming on for the summer, and I think our audience would like a contrast. What do you mean, Mr. Benny? Well, why don't you do a dramatic show or read poetry or something? Well, you see, the Aldridge family has been very successful on the air. We want to continue with it. Oh. But, Henry... People get tired of laughing all the time. Why don't you introduce a serious note? You know, make people cry. Cry, Mr. Benny? Sure, that sob stuff goes over big. I smell a rat. <laughs> oh. Well, look, Henry, here's another idea. Have you ever considered doing a sort of an adventure serial? Something with suspense and action. For instance, look, you can be lost in the jungle. Savages and wild animals will be after you. You know, make a real thriller out of it. No comedy, eh? No, not in the jungle, Henry. Well, I don't think our sponsor would like that. Oh. 
Well, here's the drugstore. Let's go in and have something. Look, Henry, don't you want to show the sponsor how versatile you are? I want to get laughs, Mr. Benny, just like you do. Oh. Hey, buddy, give me a tuna fish and peanut butter sandwich. Okay. Let's try it again. (laughs) Now, look. Look, Henry. Henry, let me paint a picture for you. Say, for instance, you're lost in the jungle, and week after week, people will be tuning in to find out what's happening to you. They're worried about you. They'll be on edge. Did the golden dragon get Henry, they'll say. Or how the cannibals got him. Think of that. I'll have a chocolate soda. <laughs> but Henry... Uh, vanilla ice cream. Now look, Henry, forget about the jungle. Here's another idea for you. You're an office boy on a big new city newspaper. You're just dying for a break. You want to be a reporter, see? Uh-huh. Well, one day there's a big fire in the building next door. And Millicent Mandalay, the girl you're going to marry when you're 21, is trapped in this burning building. You hear her screaming, Henry! Henry, help me! Help! No soap. Listen. So hearing her cry, you dash right into the blazing inferno. Think of it, Henry. Flames to the right of you. Flames to the left of you. I tell you, Henry, And we'll be with you again next October 6th at the same time. Meanwhile, I hope you will all enjoy The All Good Family starring Ezra Stone beginning next week. Before signing off, I'd like to thank our listeners everywhere and the members of my cast for their splendid cooperation. I would also like to thank my authors, Bill Morrow and Ed Boulogne, who worked with me in the preparation of my material. And oh yes, I uh, think I uh, better thank Ezra Stone, too. You're welcome, Buck. Well, good night, folks. See you next fall. Thank <laughs> you.